Okay, can you hear me, guys? Yeah, good morning to everyone. Good morning, excellent. Okay, so uh, I think most probably you might see in the topic for today's discussion is uh, you know uh, using AI and deep learning to revolutionize uh, thought boards and the personalized systems. So first of all, uh, I want to quickly understand how many people are familiar with this topic. Okay, are you working on this field or, uh, or how, how do you know? Okay, okay, so yeah, you know the topic is very old, but uh, however in the last few years this, this is becoming very popular because there are a lot of advancements in AI and deep learning. So we would like to understand how these topics or uh, how these, uh, you know, the AI and deep learning is really revolutionizing the the thought boards and what are the limitations with the, the previous versions and uh, how over the period of time this evolved and uh, we will also see some of the examples around that, right? So the agenda for this discussion is something like this. So we will start with understanding uh, of understanding of thought boards and uh, the personalized uh, assistant systems. So how they are different from each other. And uh, we'll also see that what are the uh, key things which we need to really understand when we're talking about a thought board, right? So that is the one of the key things which we'll talk about. And then the second interesting thing is, you know, as I said that the topic is very old. It's, it's somewhere started in the 1960s. You know, uh, in, in between, you know, we did not use so much, but especially last three, four years, this, this topic is so popular. What could be the reason? You know, why we are really talking about that? Right, so that is the another interesting point which we talk about, and in terms of the usage of these things, how the industries are really leveraging this concept. Right, so here is a place we discuss about, you know, few things around the applications in different industries, etc. And then, uh, of course, so I will also discuss about few things like what is the architecture level idea, what is the integration capabilities, what are the different uh, aspects when we are really thinking about a thought board implementation in enterprise level, right? So here is a place we discuss about what are the key components, what is the architecture level understanding, and we'll also see some of the, uh, you know, the APIs, how we can really relate with the, the overall infrastructure or ecosystem perspective, right? So then we'll also see that few concepts around the artificial intelligence or a machine learning or a deep learning or a deep natural processing, uh, right? So these are the few topics we'll quickly talk about how, you know, these topics evolved over the period of time and how that is linking with the, the stages of thought boards, right? So for example, you know, as we mentioned that 1960 to 2018. So, you know, it's been almost 50, 60 years now. And uh, in this period of time, how analytics evolved and uh, how thought boards evolved, how the, the, there is a linkage between these two things. So, and we'll also see a few examples. Uh, I, I will showcase some of the demos of a uh, couple of, you know, thought boards which we, you know, which I want to show that. And then uh, I want to quickly demo it, you know, what is thought board, what is the key component. Whenever we are referring some kind of a thing, there are multiple varieties of thought boards are there. So we'll quickly show that how implementation, how the output looks like, and what are the ways we can improve, etc. So of course, this is a demo. It is not a, a real thought board which I cannot implement here. But at least, you know, to get you some kind of a flower and what is a thought board, what are the key underlying themes which we really need to work around that. Clear? Any questions? Any expectations from the session? Yes, uh, while I'm discussing about the uh, demystifying thought board, so there I will talk about what are the AI frameworks are available and what are the uh, different packages or are different uh, frameworks. You know, uh, one is AI services and one is bot frameworks. So we will discuss about what are the available bot frameworks and what are the available AI services. And I want to quickly see that what is the pros and cons and uh, what are the key things which you need to keep it in mind when you are selecting a, a particular framework or a particular AI service? Sure? 
any other expectations uh <clears throat> so there are few examples i'm going to talk about uh with respect to you know uh, for example i will take a one kind of a journey uh, for example customer care center or maybe customer service center how over the period of time uh, it evolved for example we will take a different different scenarios and we will see that in each scenario how the ai and deep learning or a natural language processing or a, any analytics fits into the role so we'll discuss about the journey uh, with one example and probably i will also showcase one or two examples uh, while while i'm explaining the the demystify demystification of chatbot uh i have few examples but right now in my current slides it's not there probably i can share some of the things once the session is completed uh i will when i was talking about architecture perspective so there i will quickly touch upon a few things and i will also discuss about types of chatbots you know uh, there i will quickly wow you about what are these things right any other expectations <laughs> so in a short span of time it's not very easy to convince uh, in a in a, a, a mathematical way of derivation but at least i will give you the intuition behind what is the topic right for example if i'm selecting a particular algorithm what is the intuition behind that because you know it's you know the the audience is very broad and here some of the people may not aware may some people may have aware so it's a difficult to you know really derive the some of the algorithms in a short span of time so i will give the quick intuition what is what Introduction to chatbots and personal assistant systems. So, if I talk about this one, we'll do few things like what are the chatbots, personal assistant systems, and a few quick snapshot of history and how voice and virtual assistants are different from uh, traditional chatbots. And we'll also talk about and it's related to pers personal assistant system. and how this personal assistant system uh, are you know really making change in your life so that was what we talked about and we will quickly walk you about types of bots right so let's let's discuss about that so first of all what is a chat bot any idea what is chat bot <laughs> now how they start with the chat bot you know So to make it people cool, right? So that's how they started in the 60s. So to just act like a human, you know, whenever you are answering something, etc. So that's how they started the concept. But over the period of time, it's evolved. But a simple uh, definition of chatbot is a chatbot is a simple program which will give you some kind of a uh, some kind of answers based on some intelligence. So that intelligence can be many forms. So the intelligence can be as simple as a, a quick question and answers, a repository of corpus, or a corpus of uh, a different question and answers in the past, historical data, or maybe some kind of a derived insights from the algorithm. So there can be the intelligence can be as simple as question and answers, or as and as complex as some kind of insight which we are deriving out of the uh, some kind of algorithm, scientific algorithm. So so basically, when I am talking about a chatbot, a chatbot. A, is a, a platform a, a kind of a uh, an application where you can understand a human and you can respond based on the context so when i talk about based on the context the context can be you know uh, as i said that there can be a many many forms which we'll discuss about little later point of time so so basically when we talking about the chatbot as i said that how it evolved over the period of time it started understanding the artificial intelligence and over the period of time now you know if you look at that artificial intelligence is so popular you know for example uh, in 1970s 80s but later point of time it is 
you know treated it because of uh, the infrastructure the applications etc but in the la last couple of years if you see that there are a lot of advantages a lot of changes in the technology and the ecosystem and that helped a lot to become popular in the industry especially the you know processing mechanism you know earlier if i want to process something it takes a lot of time right so now the concept of cpu gpu you know you understand that concept so those are the coming into the picture and then we are able to understand the knowledge uh, with the help of natural language processing or a deep natural language processing okay so uh, there are different names you know people used to call you know one called you know popular name is conversational form, you know conversational platforms or maybe some people call it as a talk board voice board virtual board a simple bot or a instant messenger bot and uh, there are interactive agent or a artificial conversational uh, in, you know agent there are different different names we give it as a uh, you know artif sorry uh, the short board correct okay so <clears throat> now let's talk about what is a short board ecosystem you know when i talk about short board ecosystem you know you can say that it is just like another user you know whenever you are interacting with someone for example you are taking uh, an, a simple example is you know you are directly calling to some customer care or uh, you are asking some help how you are treating that right it's just like another user right so that's what we are talking about here and uh, it has a similar kind of a, uh, you know you can say that the qualities of human you know some of the qualities as i mentioned like you know it has a profile photo you know it can give a name for that you can also have some kind of a, you know uh, intelligence like you know posting the messages or uh, you know understanding the messages some of the human qualities like you know whatever we used to do whenever we talking about interaction right so that is something which i was referring that and when we talk about personal assistant system what do you mean that can anyone know about what is a personal assistant system any example it's alexa siri i think most of you guys have iphone or android phone so probably you might find out uh, these virtual assistant right for example you know when i started uh, you know uh, in the morning you know when i called a taxi so the taxi guys you know on the way but uh, i want to know quickly information about okay how much time it takes to reach uh, marathalli so it gave me information like 2 hours 15 minutes so if i want to know that what i need to do i need to go to the google maps and i you know uh, you know identify location starting location ending location give me the a complete information so that takes some time but this help me so a simple like application like a siri or a simple application like a google assistant and what you 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 aware of this uh, companies right so for example the companies like so apple apple have uh, a siri application which is uh, very popular especially it comes with almost all ios uh, devices and uh, the microsoft has uh, its own uh, assistant which is what cortana and uh, google google have google now and uh, amazon comes with the amazon alex right so <clears throat> there are some more short boards or assistants you know which you can also create with the facebook also so there are couple of things which we i mean right now i'm not getting into the discussion but at least if you understand the the virtual assistant what are the virtual assistants we are talking about okay so let's talk about a quick example around uh, amazon alexa so what are the use of amazon alexa anyone have the amazon alexa it's a kind of a smart speaker system you know uh, it's an a device which comes with the the software right so what generally it do so uh, it's like you know how many people aware of the iot devices or like smart home you know etc for example if you talk about a smart home what are the qualities of smart home one of the key thing is you know for example if i want to switch on a fan or maybe a turn off an ac or maybe quickly look at who is you know anyone is coming inside so some of these qualities which we want to talk about to simplify your life right so for example uh, if you think about iot devices you can connect with alexa and the iot devices so that you can control the entire uh, iot devices from you right and i also given a couple of example smart home and iot connected to smart devices and and control your smart appliance with your voice so here i don't need to give any instruction or i don't need to press anything 
what I can do is I can just give a, a voice based instruction which can control entire ecosystem, right. That is a, a one key thing which is very popular, especially in India it is not uh, that popular, but in US it is almost uh, 20 to 30 percent of houses will have this, uh, you know, this particular thing. And for example, if you think about a transportation, suppose if I want to book a, uh, a Uber cab, right. So I do not need to book, open my API and um, or, uh, my application and I do not I don't need to book that. What I can do? I can directly give an answer or a voice based uh, uh <coughs> instruction so that it will automatically pick up your instruction and it will help you to book the ticket or uh, book the cab. Uh, and similarly, the travel, entertainment. So for example, I want to uh, quickly play a music of a particular song. So it has a, a set of set of music which comes from maybe Amazon or whatever the you know, partners which they have it, they can quickly pick up the, the music and the playing games or whatever you want to do that. So even for example, I mentioned a couple of things like cooking, how it will help you. Suppose if I want to know a particular, uh, I want to prepare a particular food and a particular recipe. So I want to quickly understand what is the recipe of that. So I do not need to really, uh, you know, give the instruction or look at the YouTube videos. Right, I think it's very common in these days. You know, everyone look at the YouTube videos and cook the food. Right, so I think it's very common in the towns. But what I'm trying to say is here, you will get a audio-based instructions if you asking some particular help or a particular specific information. Right, so like this, you can see that there are plenty of examples which you can see from the uh, you know uh, the personal assistant systems how uh, Alexa can help you. So just this is an example guys, so you can extend the capability to even in the business also, right. So that is uh, something which I want to talk about. Uh, some of the key differences between chart boards and personal assistant systems, w what is the key, key difference? Anyone can tell me? So the chart boards is more generic, I mean when I say more generic I mean to say that uh, when we talk about uh, chart board, it's a more like an enterprise level or a server level interaction, right. For example, uh, most of the times if I want to interact with some particular customer care, etc., what, how will you do that? You will interact with the server. That's how the instruction will go. From there it will process and it will give you the instruction. But whereas a personalized you know, assistant system is specific to your client, I mean the client, the client is you, correct. So that is one key difference. But otherwise, you know, some of these qualities like, uh, you know, easy to create, lesser time, these are all are over the period of time is changing because, you know, uh, you know, the complexity is, you know, decreasing or increasing over the time with the help of different, different technologies and techniques, etc. So, but a uh, key thing is a second point which I want to talk about, which is the chart boards uh, are more specific to a server centric and uh, whereas, uh, uh, personal assistant system is specific to a personal, correct, okay. So the other one is why do we need chart board, yeah. Uh, it is depends how you are uh, taking that. So there are some kind of a, uh, you know, advanced platforms which came up which is a memory, memory to memory based uh, technique. So there you can also integrate uh, frequently, uh, I mean frequently you can take the feedback and you can rerun the model or something, that's possible. Even chart board or even personal assistant system also. So but depends on the what techniques or what kind of a platforms which you are using it. No, the personal assistant system you can say that subset of uh, chart boards because the chart boards is a little bigger uh, in a universe. Yes, that is the one, this, you know, one difference I was uh, referring here. Uh, <coughs> so, for example, I think uh, I was talking about here, yeah, the last point. So, you can see that, for example, chart board, Veronica able to remember your email address uh, if you provide it to her. But whereas, uh, uh, there is a challenge with the personal assistant system. So, that is something which is uh, uh, a difference. Of course, I think this is something which we, uh, which is we are, uh, you know, uh, trying to converge. So, but probably it may take some time. Yes. No, the, the, 
there is a one reason for that the, the kind of a framework they are using and the kind of a technology and processing mechanism the how you are capturing and because end of the day if you capturing the same information it should go through a modeling part so that part probably it will not take so it's a fixed kind of a learning will be there but it's not a, a kind of a complete continuously memory right yeah yes that is there uh, i will i will discuss about towards end of the uh, you know module where we are talking about some of these deep learning algorithms how it's revolutionizing this yes that is that so that comes under the many to many uh, we'll we'll talk about when we talking about the types of chatbots and what is the current trends and where we are converging it so that topic is very interesting because when we are discussing about this uh, you know a same chatbot can assist multiple people or a multiple topic or a multiple context if something is possible so that is something which we are going to discuss right okay cool <coughs> so i think i already discussed about why do we need chatbot i think there are few examples we uh, you know a simple example just now i was referring that uh, hi uh, this is uh, i mean basically i want to quickly understand what is the status of a particular train or a particular thing so just i mentioned that you know uh, uh, how we can really get help from that so it can be a simple personal assistant system the morning which i was talking about the example or maybe a simple chatbot uh, where uh, it's installed in a, a particular uh, uh, inquiry in a railway uh, system right so that's also possible so uh, i think it the value proposition is very wider uh, I, i right now i mentioned few top, you know few things but the value proposition is much bigger than what we are at right so probably you know the value proposition when when we are entering into the the applications of a chatbot or personal assistant system in different industries there you will really see that the what is the entire scope the value proposition of chatbot in the industry okay so i i think i already mentioned that uh, the topic is very old i think it started in 1950s and uh, if now if you look at it's over the period of time it's uh, there is a significant uh, improvement but if you look at especially last 10 years from 2006 to 2007 uh, you can see that there is a lot of progress happened and all the progress happened uh, one is the ai development that is one uh, driver but there are a couple of other things also the use the the uses of implementation the, i mean the implementation in the industry so that's also one adoption is also equally important so that is another aspect and the third thing is if you look at most of these uh, 2006 onwards most of them are a voice based and a chatbot the voice chatbot or virtual assistant or a personal assistant is it correct so if you look at that ibm watson of course it's a ai framework which we'll talk about a little later but the siri google now alexa or cortana these are all are what these are all are talking about a virtual assistant or a personal assistant system correct okay so how are the chatbots are different from an application what is the app sorry a uh, specific a uh, particular uh, you know a particular topic which we are talking about right so when we talking about a application versus chatbot both are similar in terms of the framework when i talk about technology but what it comes with it comes with a, a conversational interface right the conversation interface means for example how we can interact so that is the only difference which you can see a difference between application versus a chatbot right okay so let's talk about different types of chatbots i think this is this is uh, uh, very popular but if you look at that a chatbots are you can classify in a multiple manner right so one common thing is open domain and closed domain what did, what do you mean that okay yeah th that's that's true so you know it's basically we are talking you are defining the scope okay the scope is a particular topic 
or a particular uh, technology or a particular uh, you know uh, task to fulfill right so that is a open domain versus closed domain and what is the other one uh, a generative bots versus um, a re retrieval based bot so the generative is something you know it's just like a, the human how you are answering certain questions whenever someone asks suppose you asked one question in a, a particular manner, I will answer in a particular manner, right? So it's basically, you know, how we are interacting accordingly, you will change the conversation, right? But where is a generative, uh, sorry, where is a retrieval based? So we are saying that, okay, a, a group of questions, we are answering a certain way. So basically, that is more like, uh, you know, you have a certain prefixed set of questions or a prefixed set of answers. And these set of questions, okay, what is the answer? So that's how uh, the difference between generative versus, uh, uh, you know, retrieval based things. And what is the other one? Transactional versus conversational. Exactly. So the conversational is more talking about, you know, just now I was mentioning that. Uh, uh, the generative versus retrieval based. But if you think about here, we are talking about the transactional means, okay, you asked one question, this is my answer, right? Okay, can you help me with what is the status of my train? So you, it will give you the answer. But whereas, uh, okay, before answering that, okay, how are you? How do you feel now? When is your train? How much time you have it? Some kind of a conversation if I want to integrate with the conversation. So that is something comes under a conversational. So it is like more humanly uh, interaction, right? And if you think about a text-based bot versus voice-based bot, I think it's very straightforward. Uh, and scripted bots versus AI bots. So what does this mean? Yeah. Scripted bots is something like you are defining the a certain patterns, okay. In my past historical data, I have certain patterns. The patterns, we are defining it, okay. If a questions are coming one, pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, pattern four, okay, these are my set of answers, okay. So it is more like a group of patterns we are defining and we are coming up with a particular answers for that. So it's more like a scripted, I mean, based on some kind of a logic, we will try to create a, a decision tree or a kind of a thing. I mean, I'm not talking about a decision tree with respect as a technique, but I'm talking about a decision tree is a how to take a decision, how to take a, a based on a pattern. So that is that's what the scripted bot. The A bots is something, I think it's more like some standard conversational, but when you talk about A based, it is like, you know, how to integrate the recent uh, the uh, feedback, right? And how to learn, you know, frequently, or uh, how to, you know, converse with more in, you know, intelligent, right? It's, it's, we can say that intelligent bots, that's also another name. Okay, the other one is based on database and using ML, I think is similar to uh, AI versus scripted bots, because scripted bots is like, you require more database, and uh, as I said, that the patterns will be defined, and you will keep it in that, and uh, the AI based is more like uh, some kind of algorithms we use to come up with the answers. And uh, sequential versus intelligent, I think this is also similar names. And uh, goal-oriented versus purpose-oriented, it is somewhat similar to open domain and closed domain. And uh, virtual assistant versus messaging apps, this is somewhat similar to uh, what we discussed, voice-based versus text-based. And uh, specialist versus general, again, this is comes under open versus this. So the reason I kept this set of terminology is because these are a different different names we talk about so don't get confused with a lot of terminology so that's the idea make sense okay so I quickly uh, mentioned a couple of uh, pointers here what is scripted chartboard versus artificial intelligence chartboard so I think you know I given mentioned that few advantages disadvantages I think probably by end of the session you will also understand what are these primary differences? So we'll talk about that. Uh, so a few facts about chartboard and the industry. So probably if you look at, I mentioned in the very beginning, 
started as an attempt to fool the humans. That, that's how it started in 1960. But in the, if you look at the recent trends, uh, you, if you can mention that 80% of businesses want chatbots by 2020. So that means there is a huge scope, you know, for a business, you know, to implement the chatbots. So this is uh, done by one of the survey done by Oracle. And the second one is the global chatbot market expected to grow exponentially between 2018 and 2023. And again, this is also another survey conducted by a particular organization called Credence Research. And uh, you can see that uh, there is another uh, survey conducted by another company called Gotter. 85% of customer interactions will be managed without human. So what is this? Even this particular thing recently uh, implemented in many uh, governments also. I mean, for example, uh, there is a lot of digitalization happening in the uh, governments, right? So for example, uh, I come from Andhra Pradesh. So basically, if you know, there is a uh, there is a project which is undertaken by government of AP. It's a e pragati. So basically, they want to provide every service to the uh, you know few, I mean the the users. I mean the users means the people. So without any kind of a manual intervention. So of course that brings to the transparency and other advantages. But what is the underlying theory? So it can be as simple as some kind of a mechanism. It, they can use some kind of a AI based application which can directly give to them. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, one of the key thing for most of the industries is customers, you know, customer interaction, right? So this is the one of the key driver for customer satisfaction. So I will also show you one example uh, when I'm discussing about the customer interaction with uh, a particular company and a user. So we'll discuss about that. But uh, at least if you understand this one, this is uh, one of the key thing and, uh, you know, uh, the the companies, everyone want to implement, right? As I mentioned that 85% of customer interactions will be man managed without human. And uh, again, so there is one more survey. It's a 32% of execute says voice recognition is the most widely accepted AI technology in their businesses. Uh, anyone familiar with this? So, so this is again a survey uh, conducted by, I forgot the company name, but uh, so this is also a recent survey. So almost everyone talked about uh, the voice-based recognition systems. It's not just because of the simplicity, or it's not a you know, sophistication perspective, but that is one of the key technology is helping the overall efficiency. So we'll discuss about how it efficient. And uh, as I said that, you can see that IoT is one of the trending area you know, across all the field. So this is the place, the instructions which you want to give either in the form of chart, in the form of a voice-based instructions, correct? So to connect the devices, I think this is what I was uh, talking about, a six billion connected <laughs> devices, which can controlled by, you know, with the help of voice-based instruction, right? Okay, so <clears throat> that is the a first quick introduction to the uh, chart boards, as well as uh, the personal assistant system. Okay, so the intellectual property or IP rights or uh, technology transformation or uh, you know the uh, the security aspect that is a different uh, discussion. But uh, I will touch upon this point as probably in the middle of the discussion. But yes, uh, I even I'm not great at that particular topic because that comes with more technology aspect, right? Okay, so the next thing which I want to quickly discuss you know, how the chart boards are evolved over the period of time and where are they in the industry perspective, right? So let's quickly see that how the chart boards are winning the industry, where they are really uh, impacting, right? So let's quickly understand. So this is something uh, which I was referring that, you know, if you look at this one, what are my traditional chart boards? If you look at the traditional chart boards, what are the traditional chart boards will do? So I, I think probably a little difficult to read, but uh, you know it's like more like a system driven, right? And uh, it's like the minimal functionalities, 
and the ability to understand humans is relatively low. It's more like, you know, it's a transactional, right? That, that is, uh, comes under traditional. But what, if you look at the current state of chart board, what is the current state of chart board? It has some kind of intelligence. You can increase the intelligence uh, within the chart board with the help of different algorithms. But it has some kind of limitations, as he mentioned in the past, you know, like the interacting with the multiple users on a, a different, different topic, if something is possible, right? And that's what I was talking about, a many to many. So or a, what is a many to many? Many customers talking about a many topic, the, the chart board can also interact with the many uh, customers and many topics at the same time, is that something is possible? So that is some kind of limitations which is with the current state of, uh, you know, current state of chart board. So which is something, there is a big opportunity for AI, right? So that is uh, one of the key thing, but uh, other couple of things I mentioned that, you know, automation is uh, at, a, at an enterprise level, that is something is ongoing. I think that that will take place sometime. So that is the place, these all things comes into the picture. And uh, the other one is, uh, I also mentioned that uh, ability to maintain the system, task, and people, all these three things together when you are answering something. So right now what happened is, you are taking the context into the picture and you are answering the question. That means that I'm talking about chart board perspective. But when we talk about the chart board, is, is, can it integrate other aspects, like a people is one aspect, a systems is one aspect, and the context is one aspect. So in the future chart board, this is one of the key thing which we are trying to address. So that is the place, there's a lot of R&D is happening, especially the big companies like Microsoft and, uh, and the Google, and they, are, they are investing a lot of money every year. It's a billion, billions of dollars, you know, they're investing a lot, right? So that is something which I was talking about. So when we talk about the, the what is the predictive futuristic chart boards looks like, right? So when we talking about a futuristic, as I said that reach of deep learning and artificial intelligence is into the every area of industries. So I was, I was talking about across domains, you can see the application. So that is directly impacts your chart board development. You know, I, I, will, I will talk about a couple of things. And the, as I said that, the voice based, you know, uh, the experience is going to be a mainstream, right? And uh, the another biggest area which is uh, happening in the industry, which is which is some extent talks about the uh, the concept of the security aspect, you know, the blockchain. So which is, you can say that it's a kind of a, a database which is a crypt, you know, uh, it's more protected database. You can say that. I mean, that's an anonymous, you know, uh, and uh, you can think about in that manner. But yes, and I'm not getting into the blockchain. But what I'm trying to say is that this is also uh, giving a big impact in terms of the chart board. The other big impact in terms of the predictive uh, future perspective, the social messenger applications will aggressively drive chart board marketing. So this is extremely important. For example, the Facebook using thousands of chart boards as part of their marketing activity. Right? So what are those things? I mean, for example, we'll see that couple of examples around that. But yes, this is something which you can think about. And the chart boards influence customer insights and predictability of users' interactions or actions. You know, those things also will be comes into the picture. Again, the biggest another uh, driver for using is the cost. So in the next couple of years, the cost will be drastically reduced. So how that is, there are multiple drivers can impact, but we'll see that. But yes, so if you look at this one, so how we are talking about the chart boards over the period of time, and what is the current, and what is the past, what is the future, and a few example, how, what are the things will come into the picture, yeah? Sorry, can, can you repeat that? Okay, you are saying that whatever, for example, if you're talking about a personal customer, a customer information you have in the database, how you can integrate that database information while you're answering the questions. Okay, so there is a way, I mean, 
ob obviously this is something which is a very good application. So I think in a similar lines, I'm going to talk about one use case that we can discuss about that one. Okay, so the you know artificial intelligence for a business perspective, we'll, we'll see a couple of examples. But yes, uh, we already discussed about the virtual agent. What is virtual agent? How the natural language processing help you? You know, that is the big topic I'm going to talk about at the time of uh, deep learning applications perspective. Yes, if you think about an enterprise level, what is the role of different chartboards? Right, so if you look at that, so this is a very good uh, uh, understanding about what is a you know, role of chartboards in a different, different automated uh, aspects or a, you know, activities in the enterprise level. For example, if you look at that, um, if you see that, I mean, I've given few examples around here with respect to a customer service industry, but if you think about, uh, suppose if you talk about a, a business, especially customer centric industry perspective, the uh, first thing is the front office. So how you can interact with the front office. So for example, if you look at this, one is, uh, I was referring that the cognitive agent, that is the place, it's a very common interactions which we do. They will ask certain questions, we will answer certain questions. You know, that is what I was talking about, the FAQ bot. And the other one is advisory bot, or advisor bot. Advisor bot means what? If you need some information, you know, for example, you're uh, you are looking for a specific information. If they're asking certain advice, Based on your inputs, it will give us a you know, pattern-based advisors or a, a intelligent-based advisors. So that is one area. Again, the other one is the agent assisted. So this is a one big area if you think about uh, the customer care, uh, customer care uh, you know, call center perspective. So here, the call center board or self-help board is very popular. Especially the self-help board is uh, something very popular, especially industries like HR uh, or HR function. So if you look at HR function, okay, if I give instructions like, for example, I want quick, um, uh, I want to uh, get a copy of my uh, salary slip, or if I want a particular letter, a particular information. So based on certain inputs, it automatically create a, uh, you know, uh, a create a, a whatever you are looking for information. So that is mostly self-help bot. So this is one biggest area, you know, the automation is taking place. And the, you know, the other one is like financial inquiry or a process inquiry. Now these are also biggest areas which we are referring that, right? So this is also, there is a lot of automation is happening and that's the place these uh, short boards come into the picture. And if you think about the other one, I mean, especially the advisory, you know, advisor bot, this is very popular if you think about the advisor bots, especially uh, the hospitality and the travel industry. For example, it will advise, suppose you book a hotel, okay, and um, you, you particular, you checked into the hotel and immediately it may give you some information about, okay, what are the closest places which you can go there or which you can visit. It will give you some advices based on your actions, right? So that is something, you know, comes into the picture. Of course, it is extended to any kind of a bot. I mean, it's not just necessary to the travel and uh, this industry, but you can extend this to any industry or any function. And the back office is another biggest area. I know I think uh, uh, there is a big automation happening, which is uh, intelligent process automation, you know, IPA or RPA. So there are different terms which use in the industry, but that's also one biggest area comes under the back office uh, perspective. And uh, the core businesses perspective, like, you know, we were talking about some of the SME functions, that is the place, advisory perspective. You know, there is a, um, uh, I think uh, I read an article uh, in the IBM website. It's a, they, they created a, a CFO chart board. What is a CFO chart board? What is the function of CFO? What is the function of CFO? The financial advisory, I mean, that is a one of the key area and uh, managing the finance. So, for example, if, you, if your CFO is absent, so, but certain, certain particular information you want, how you can do that? So this is the place the CFO chart board can play a role. Like, for example, if you ask me information about, okay, what is my net profitability for the last two quarters or three quarters? And where we are doing good, where we are not doing good. Suppose if I give a certain instructions around that, it automatically 
to give the information. So that is something which I was referring that it can comes under a function or advisory perspective. Of course, there are few examples, but a popularly, uh, you know, the solution perspective, a uh, few functions are extensively using this uh, automation and especially the chart boards and uh, the supply chain and the IT. And when I say IT means I'm not talking about a development aspect, I'm talking about IT services aspect and the facilities, you know, which is also another biggest area. And the biggest other area is, as I've mentioned, that HR. These are all our comes under support function and uh, almost all support functions are using uh, this automation, right? So any questions at this point of time? Yeah? Uh, in this, my current presentation, I don't have it, but uh, yes, there are so many examples. Probably I can talk about one example. Uh, so probably, I, I think probably might, I might have one example over here, so I will talk about that. But yes, uh, I will showcase some of the examples around that in the middle of the discussion. Any other questions? Example. <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, the CFO chart board is developed by IBM. Uh, I think uh, I'm not sure who are the clients of that, but uh, they developed and I read an article around that they created and uh, they are you know extending the capabilities of CFO chart board. So based on that, I was referring that. But I think they have certain clients. I think that's the reason they're implementing it. Or maybe they are going to do that. But as per I know, I don't have any information around that. Any other questions? OK. So let's move to the, uh, so the same thing. I was uh, talking about the AI journey. So if you think about whatever we discussed just now, you know, the first uh, if you think about the AI perspective, I'm not talking about a transactional perspective, I'm talking about AI perspective. You know, the, the initially we started with mimic the human action. So what is the next action? You know, how a particular person or person, personal uh, person will act like a certain action, right? So that is, you know, we are trying to mimic the human action. I think that is something we already progressed over the period of time. And uh, the other one is the decision management or a judgment. So that is uh, another big thing, which is, you know, action plus something. So for example, you want to take a certain judgment, right? For example, the mimics the human judgment, right? So how a particular person take an action, right? So that is what we are trying to mimic. And the other one is uh, the anticipate system and human action. So, so this is the place how a system works, how a human works, how you can argument together. So that is some aspect also you can talk about. And that's, that's, that comes into the argument human intelligence. And uh, see, the basically, the ultimate goal of this is basically mimics the human intelligence. How you think, how you can, you know, whenever you're taking a decision, what are the underlying processes happening? So that is something which you want to try to achieve. So I think, you know, in order to achieve all of these things, there are certain things I already mentioned here. One is the RPA or uh, maybe image processing or uh, these kind of things, which is somewhat talks about the mimics the action or a human action, right? And uh, the, the judgment is like a smart process, decision management kind of a kind of situation comes under the mimics the judgment. And the other aspect, like if you think about intelligent virtual agent, what do you mean that? I just like I was referring that Alexa or maybe I was referring that Siri or et cetera. How they act like? They are just acts like human, right? But now, how the intelligence is coming up? So that is the place the AI play a big role. So this is what I was referring that. So how we are progressing? So with the help of AI. So when I'm talking about any kind of an, you know, services perspective, so this is the something which we are trying to achieve. Clear? Okay. So if you think about the same thing, uh, I was uh, referring that one of the big area which I was talking about intelligent automation the IPA. Uh, so this is the place there are so many technologies came into the picture. I was referring to a few technologies which can help you to talk about. So for example, 
I was referring that the RPA, it's like automation uh, with the help of different things like. And uh, there are few technologies which also help you in decision management, which I was referring that. And like IBM, BPM, there is there, and uh, K2, Red Hat, OpenTAS, Pico, there are uh, different companies are coming up with a smart workflow and a decision management. This is also some kind of algorithmic driven, right? And uh, I already discussed about the machine learning and uh, NLP, NLU, NLG. There are different uh, terminology comes into picture. So this is the place. Few technologies play a role like Google or H2O, I, AI, and Microsoft, IBM. They invested a lot of money on these frameworks, right? So and the other one is virtual agents. Again, I told you, you know, one uh, thing is uh, already we discussed about Alexa and. Uh, there are a couple of other companies also like Score, IPsoft, and Amelia. There are some other companies also working on the, the virtual agents, similar to personal agent system. And the other cognitive agents like Amazon, Google, these are big companies are only able to do that because the cognitive uh, is something which is really required a lot of technology driven, right? So it's the processing is very, very complex and uh, it required good amount of investment and good amount of money. So so you can see that the bigger companies investing a lot of money on that and they are really progressing it. But yes, there are small and medium companies which are not yet to reach that level. I mean, with the help of uh, cloud-based solutions, there are some of the companies are really progressing it. But uh, you know, the bigger companies really uh, spending a lot of money and they are getting a good progress on that in terms of R&D perspective. Okay, so I think a few more examples. Uh, I think some of these examples can some more help you. Uh, one is I was referring that FAQ chatbot. So uh, I already discussed about the financial bot like check account details, general inquiry. These are the couple of purpose which you can talk about. And the call centers I already discussed about intel how intelligently you can manage uh, your you know across call centers. And the process inquiry bot we already discussed about what situations the process inquiry comes into the picture like you know, customer uh, clarify their queries based on certain, act, you know, certain inputs or a, a certain, uh, you want to fill some forms. For example, uh, you know, the process inquiry is, okay, I want to, I want to understand the key policies of HR to apply particular uh, loans or, a, you know, leaves or a certain things. So that is the place more comes into the process driven. And uh, self-help bot, again, I already discussed about this. And the knowledge management bot also, this is a very interesting thing. You know, um, this is something based on certain uh, input. Suppose based on, for example, uh, this is very uh, key things like a key ba keyword based search. For example, if I want to do something, okay, where is my, my file is located? Right, where is the particular information is located? Or maybe you can say that you are, uh, uh, you know, in, the, in a particular company, you change your designation or you, ch you moved from one uh, uh, department to other department. How these, uh, uh, you know, automatic the knowledge is transferring, or what knowledge is more pertaining to your role, and uh, some of these things also which can which can be used with the help of uh, knowledge management bot. So again, if you think about a bank perspective, so for example, I, you know, I picked a few examples around the bank, how banking uh, systems are using the chatbots, right? For example, a self help for existing customers. For example. They want to get a, a particular bill or a particular balance checking or a credit card bill or maybe payments or a money transfer. These are all few activities you can do with the help of self, you know, help bot. And, uh, you know, the, in the banking, the wealth management is one of the key area. This is the place the advisory, advisor bot comes into the picture. Yes. So, uh, I mean, so when I say the personal assistant system, the underlying concept is same, right? So, first, what we are trying to do is we are understanding the human language and you are converting into the text, and then the text will be processed with the help of different algorithms, and then you will get the answer. So, if you are adding a, a layer on top of it, which is a, a voice recognition system, so that is there, that's already existed. 
I mean, the industry they are using for multiple purposes. For example, uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking about one of the government example. So there, what they are doing is, okay, if I give an instruction, okay, I want to understand what is the rainfall in this current, in, you know, uh, current year or current current quarter, or what is the ground level water which is uh, available in the thing. So if I ask that question, it will give you the information based on the database input as well as intelligence input. Okay, you're talking about the who is the vendors or who is the, the technology, even I'm also not very sure on that. There are a lot of startups are doing that. No, they are, they are. No, no, they are doing that. No, it depends on the what type of, you know, because some of the focus start, you know, startups are there, they're focusing on this particular area. So that way you can see that. But I'm not very sure about the who is the vendor which is really doing integration. Okay, so there are a couple of more examples which you can see that a few examples like sales contracts, renegotiation uh, part. I think this is the place I was referring that the supply chain and other places. And the uh, IT help days, there are employee support system and uh, virtual agent, which is, there are different, different topics which we are talking about. I think these are the few examples which I was referring that. Uh, again, the same thing which I talked about with respect to uh, service management perspective. So how the chartboards can play a role in service management, right? Uh, so this is something like, for example, uh, the big uses of chartboards is an application perspective. It is uh, operations. In the operations, there are intelligent operations which I want to talk about, like a workplace services or application operations, infrastructure operations, command center operations. These all things uh, you can include the chartboard, right? So, of course, I was mentioning that, for example, application operations perspective, like, for example, the queue management, app user management, policy management, there are a few areas which you can really think about it. But, yes, let's, let's quickly focus on, uh, you know, industry-wise. Like, for example, as I said, that the chartboard is, you know, supporting health in across industries. If you think about the e-commerce and online marketing, which is one of the biggest area, they're really leveraging this part, right? So what are the situations you can think the, you know, the e-commerce and the online marketing things come to the picture? Like for example, if one big area is the, the sales funnel. So what do you mean sales funnel? It, it, pro it passes through multiple stages of, uh, any sales will happen at multiple stages, right? Starting with the lead, you know, you know, converting before converting there, it will pass to multiple stages. So we'll, we'll talk. About, I mean, that is something biggest area. The biggest, another biggest area is the content and gamification. So what is the content and gamification? Any idea? What is the content and gamification? Is something which we say that, for example. You know, a simple example I, I will give you, it's a more like marketing ad, but yes, suppose I'm booking a ticket, you know, I've gone through a browsing a particular uh, website, you know, I'm looking for a, a ticket between Delhi and Mumbai, so for example. So as soon as I finish that part, whether I do it or not, you know, for example, if I don't book the ticket, as soon as if you open some kind of a, your web, you know, a Facebook page or any social uh, application, immediately you can see some kind of advertisement. How it happens, how the content is changing very quickly or very, uh, you, know, you know, quickly they are relating uh, related ads, related promotions, related information, how they're providing to you. This is something, you know, comes under gamification. So will human can really do that, that quickly, you know, as soon as you completed your booking and relevant uh, promotions, relevant ads, relevant information, in your social media website, is that something is possible without automation? So that is the place the, the intelligent bots comes into the picture. So this is the place, you know, there is a lot of automation happened, and the, especially the lead generation. In the e-commerce perspective, the abandoned cart. What is that abandoned cart? So something, suppose you, uh, you know, added some, in, you know, some items to the cart, and you did not uh, complete the payment. So how you can do that? So as soon as you did not do that, if it is there for a few minutes, it immediately you, either you will get a call 
or you will get a uh, SMS or something, you are getting the communication, the interaction, right? That's also something, uh, something which you can say that uh, one big application. And the personalization and predictive analytics, this is, I already mentioned that some personalization with respect to content, but this is also extended to the communication, the communication message. So again, uh, I already given a lot of examples around the customer service industry perspective. Uh, one quick thing is uh, internal help desk, which is very big thing, and uh, FAQ automation, which I already mentioned that. And uh, the other thing is like travel and tourism and uh, the hospitality. So this is another industry which I was uh, talking about, which is uh, quickly progressing it. So I mean, this is in the adoption perspective, it's relatively low compared to other industries like e-commerce and things. But there is a very big scope, especially in the engagement ecosystem, which I was referring that. What is engagement ecosystem? So the customer engagement is very key thing. For example, you, I, I, I just given that one example around, okay, you uh, checked into the particular property uh, hotel and it is immediately it will share some information about weather information, with information about, uh, you know, uh, uh, few location of few popular places to visit, etc. right? So if you think about that is, that is more like engaging the customer or engaging the user, correct? So that is something which I was talking about. There is a lot of things already in place, but there is a big scope for that. And uh, the other one is the personalization, the predictive analytics, the property recommendation, the customer service and voice basically, and if I want to cancel a particular booking or if I want to extend my stay for some days, these are all things comes under the customer service perspective. And the pricing is biggest area for uh, the airlines and uh, travel, I mean across travel, for example, this is something comes under revenue management, but uh, the dynamic price engine, right? How quickly you are changing the prices, you know, that's also some information uh, in the smart pricing via artificial intelligence. So that is also one of the biggest area with respect to travel and tourism perspective. Because, you know, uh, they have a fixed inventory and they want to make maximum amount of money. You know, this comes under with uh, uh, aid tickets or bus tickets or travel tickets, any kind of a ticket, as well as the, the rooms, hotel rooms, or this also comes under uh, the advertisement and, uh, you know, media perspective also. The revenue management is a very key thing in, in this area. But yeah, so the other, I already discussed about plenty of examples around the banking and financial services. You know, one of the biggest thing is the negotiator. Uh, this is, what is a negotiator guys? What is a negotiator? So for example, if I want to apply for a particular loan or a particular credit card, etc. So you are looking for a specific information or uh, you want to apply for a loan if I'm able to get a 10% interest rate or maybe 8% interest rate. So how will you negotiate that? How will you send the communication? So that is biggest area which is happening in this industry. And uh, I already discussed about, this is, uh, uh, this is something, uh, I seen these applications are uh, very old. Uh, if you think about, there is a one biggest thing is uh, pre-screening. What do you mean pre-screening? The pre-screening of the resume. For example, the resume screening is one thing. Not only that, so uh, basically the, there is a one company, I forgot the name of the company, so I got a call from them and uh, I, they asked me send information, are you interested in this uh, particular position or something like that. And they also ask certain details automatically. So what is the details like? Okay, can you give me, uh, can you explain me about yourself? Or can you give me these details? So based on that, they are screening the information. Or maybe they are matching with your information with the resume information, right? So this is an automated process which has happened, right? So this is one area which is uh, big, uh, big time using uh, because, you know, you have to be pretend like a uh, human, but at same time, you know, you should capture the information in an automated manner. So this is one area which is big time happening. And I, I already discussed about uh, the self, uh, you know, services like process HR request, proactive uh, problem solver, or uh, update personal information automatically. Suppose 
a particular information is a compliance perspective, you require to do that. So what will you do that? What you require to do that? So if I want to update a specific information, uh, which is uh, mandatory for your compliance, uh, an organization has. So for example, uh, which we are referring to that, which is somewhat similar to what we are talking about, you know, the integration with the voice and chat. Right, but there are few companies like, you know, I, I think few companies like Ross Intelligence, Do Not Pay, Tara, and uh, there are a couple of other examples also. So <coughs> these examples act like an assistant, right? <coughs> okay, so this is a quick overview about how, you know, different industries are using chartboard for a, a different, different application. Any questions? Yes, you are extremely correct. Uh, so the data is the key uh, for even chartboards also. So this is the one reason the chartboards evolved very late. You know, for example, one is the data, the the capturing data capturing methodology. The other one is the technology to process. So these two things happening in in you know in this especially the last three four years is very rapidly, but in the past we don't have that kind of a capturing mechanism. So, you know, for example, a simple mechanism which I was referring that, the social media information, which is something like a conversational, right? So from there you can get a lot of information out of that. And uh, there is a lot of internal call records. You know, for example, if you think about a, a call record, you already have the call records in the form of text, in the form of audio. So you already have it that. So this all data is mandatory to process this one. The, the big difference, you know, the data is required, you know, data is already there. Even if your data is there, understanding the data is not very easy. You know, for example, especially the, the text, you know, uh, which is very extremely important. That, that's what I was talking about. There are two aspects which is really impacting the industry. One is NLU. NLU means natural language understanding, right? The other one is NLG, natural language generation. So these two areas, which is really um, you know, created an impact in the chartboard industry, which is earlier it was not that much popular. So even in the past, even in the now, the data is the key thing. There is no doubt. Without data, we can't do much. So all the industries, the automation happens with the help of data. Without data, it is not possible. But what is the advancement happening is the other aspects, especially in the artificial intelligence side or the algorithmic perspective. So that is the advancement happened and that is helping to become popular. Is that answered? Okay, any other questions? Okay. See, the conversational, uh, it is the regulations is very, very, different for a different, different countries. You know, for example, some of the conversational perspective, you know, there are certain regulations already there. Like you cannot take a personal information. Like you can take some information like uh, gender and a couple of location and other cookies information, etc. But you cannot really point out a particular person. Right? That kind of regulations is always in place. 
but this is depends on the country to country and or not there is no fixed rule across a globe or something but that is just similar to any other industry but here the regulatory regulations are a little more stringent because you are interacting with the humans so you cannot really point out you cannot really abuse you cannot really pick up uh, some un, you know un, uh, some information which is you cannot so that that is something regulations is in place even india also they come up with a different different policies related to technology related to even even the social media also they are coming up with a new policy so that is there Sorry. Yes. So in central repository is interactions because otherwise how you can really pick up the corpus is something is really man mandatory to process your data. So if you don't have interactions, just like a garbage in garbage out, right? It's a kind of if you don't have a sufficient number of interactions, how will you really train your model? So you know, as I said that. the all the conversation all the interactions all possible way of interactions if you have it you will your output accuracy can definitely improve that is a by default which you can assume that any other questions on that any companies are really integrating both the technologies but i don't think they have their regulatory policies you know like for example there is compliance issue right because you are using both the things and creating a one single human i mean it is something sometimes that is a uh, it's a commercial it's not a open source platform or something right so i don't think that is possible but yes you know uh, there is a possibility that um, you know you are using a one bot framework in the one service line and another bot framework in another service line the capturing information and uh, this information you are capturing and you are keeping a central repository that is possible but i'm saying that you cannot integrate both the algorithms together and come up with a new algorithm it is that something is not possible clear okay so i think till now we discussed about two big aspects one is chatbots introduction and uh, the uses of chatbots right so the other big area which we really want to understand is what are the core components of chatbot so when we are trying to come up with a chatbot what are the key things you should really keep it in mind right so for example uh, if you think about this is a high level architecture so if you look at uh, the interaction is the people um, and with the help of a different different maze like you can interact with the web page interact with the chat sms email activity you know stream or some kind of smart agent a mobile app you can th think about any different forms you can think about it then there is a some kind of a user experience design i mean that u ux we call it as and this is the place you know the human machine inter you know interaction which is happening in the form of text in the in the form of video in the form of audio etc so that is something which goes into the your chatbot right so if you think about a chatbot so as i said that first you need to understand what it what a particular customer a particular uh, you know user is talking about that's the place the nlp or nlu comes into the picture it's listening listening what they are saying right and based on that you know you will use existing knowledge and existing algorithms and uh, some of the business logic these all the knowledge is located in the form of model in the form of a, a predefined model or a, an algorithm so then that you know of course in this case you can also use with you know the cloud based services like some of the open api some of databases some applications etc so why this is comes into the picture is for example some open apis <coughs> a simple example is for example you are using alexa as a personal assistant system so what the personal assistant system will do so okay i asked that can you book a pizza with uh, you know uh, this this specification what it will do it will take your information in the form of instructions and uh, it will pass that information to you know the particular api that is the role but you know the 
Alexa will not book the pizza. What it will do? It will pass information to the API, external API. The external API will do take care of that request. Correct. So, what I am trying to say is this is still you have integrated with some of the cloud based services or cloud based API or maybe any API. So, this is the a chartboard framework, guys. So, if you think about the listening is the one of the key thing there. It, you will you will supply that information in the form of intent. We'll, we'll discuss about what do, you, what do you mean intents and entities and actions, etc. And uh, then you will also pick up that information in the form of uh, uh, text or in the form of anything, and that will be converted in the text, and that will reach out to the knowledge or ML, and then it will generate your answer. And once you generate that answer, that an, uh, the answer will go to the you know interaction uh, user experience. Suppose your user experience is uh, you want to see the answers in the form of voice. Then your, the text will be converted into the voice, just like a subtitle, right? How you are getting the subtitles in a movie? It's a, it's a one 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 form of this, right? So <coughs> that is something which you can say that. And the use cases there are so many use cases you can see that. Uh, so of course, I little bit simplified the the chartboard architecture. If you look at this one, suppose you are chatting with someone, and uh, you are giving instructions. Right? For example, you are a user. You are asking specific information. So you are the chartboard is listening you. Right? So when it's listening, it will go to the NLU component, which I was referring that, and you can see that it is uh, extract intent and uh, entities. I will talk about what is intent, what is entities. That is the first thing which we'll do it. Then it will move to the, uh, you know, the dialogue management or a tracker or a anything, and then that will uh, create a, a NLG. NLG means that is action will take. What is the next action? Next action in the form of a message, right? So of course, when it's connecting, you can connect. You can. You are seeing that there are applications, APIs also, which you are interacting with that. So what I'm trying to say is. First thing is, it will understand what the user is saying. Right here is the place we will discuss about what is NLU. You know, NLU is, as I said, that there are two big aspects which you really require to know. One is, what is that? Uh, intent, and the other one is entity. So, what do you mean intent and entity? So, this is something which you really require to understand. So, what is intent? Intent is suppose what is the, you know the, it's it's a kind of a uh, intent means what the user intent is, like for example, a intent is a collection of expressions that means the same thing, but are constructed in a different manner, right? For example, I, I given a simple example is suppose whenever you want to greet someone, what will you do? Either you will say hi, you will say hello, greetings, you know, uh, good morning, something like that you will talk about, right? So these are all things comes under what I intend called greeting, right? So if someone is greeting using any word, I need to respond in the form of greeting. That is what I mean, intent. Is it clear? So the intent is extremely important, guys. What purpose? What is your intent? So the the really you know the chartboard really required to understand what it means, right? The other one is entity. What is the entity? Entity is nothing but more like a information. Uh, you know, basically, you can say that a entity is a information extracted from what user is saying, right? So uh, this is the place. Uh, you know, some of the information, like for example, uh, I'm traveling on a Christmas day. Okay, can you book a ticket on Christmas day? So how you know a, a, a system can understand? So what is that? In this case. I'm interacting with the machine, saying that can you book a ticket on Christmas Day? So that me that means that the machine should know about what is a Christmas Day, right? Okay, can you uh, can you explain me what are the uh, different locations which I can look at from here? So first of all, the system should know where you are locating, right? So this is what I was referring that the entity. Entity is some information. Which can extract from the user, or which you can extract and you can relate with some value. So I, I, I was I mean I given the example of a date time specified like Christmas will imply on 
25th of you know December. That that's how you can understand. So similarly, when you look for a, a famous place in a city, you would need to capture the information like the what kind of place it is. That is the intent, right? For example, they ask you, okay, can you give me examples of look? You know, I want to see the some locations. So how will you relate that? So first of all, it need to understand what is your interest. Okay, are you looking for a spiritual places? Are you looking for a, a some kind of visiting places? What does that mean? That intent, right? So that is extremely important when we are talking about a, a machine perspective, what it sees and understanding. The third one is action. So the action is what action I can take, uh, what action it can take. So for example, if it is a greeting, you can automatically give the greeting. But if you are asking the booking a ticket, the booking a ticket is not in hand of uh, uh, the uh, chart board, right? It, it interacts with the an API, right? So that is the place the action sees something, a task you expect from the bot to do. <coughs> some tasks are, can be done by chart board and the, some of the tasks which is, re, you know, depending on some of the API, okay? <coughs> so this is the place, uh, why I am talking about this particular information is, it's whenever you are referring to the chart board, don't expect everything to do by chart board. Some of the things, dependencies are there. So you need to really understand what is the dependency and how you can integrate with the technology. That is the most important aspect, right? Okay, so if you think about a chart board at an enterprise level, a chart board at an enterprise level, how the enterprise level, how really uh, the chart board works. So for example, you know, you know, you can see the left hand side, it's a little what, you know, it's a little disconnect, but uh, the, because of the slides, but <coughs> the, but the core area is something like that. So where can I pointer? It's a pointer, pointer. Oh, LED is not working. Okay, <laughs> cool. Okay, cool, guys. So, what it is something which you can really see that is there is a big uh, three things. One is uh, the authentication and the user interaction, and the other is the core chart board area, and the other one is the external technologies which you can process either in the form of IoT devices or in the form of you know the processing mechanisms or anything. If you think about this one, the first thing is, uh, you know, the IoT perspective, you can see that most of the things which comes under a kind of a streaming data, data storage, data manipulation, data processing, the, the GPUs or NP, you know, CPUs, whatever, you know, technology which you have, that is more thing like enabling the service. The other thing is like the cognitive chart board perspective, what are the things comes into that? So one area is uh, the data accessibility from the API, that is the the least one, you know, either you can have a different, different databases with the help of REST APIs, you can interact with them and you can transfer the data. And then this is the place, the core platform, you know, comes into the picture. Here, you know, you can see that uh, the data access or service, um, you know, once you get it from the REST APIs, the bot, let, you know, the platform. So which I was referring that, the bot, you know, platforms are, you know, as I said that there are some existing platforms are there. So, for example, IBM Watson or maybe W, uh, you know, WTAI. So, there are a few platforms that already existed. It's a commercially, uh, you know, existed. So, which you can use that platform or you can create a your own, plot, you know, platform. So, that is depends on whatever you need. And uh, on top of that, you know, you can think about the NLP or a machine learning or a deep learning engine which you can really add the intelligence to it. Right, that is the second level of interaction. And uh, then, of course, uh, you know, for example, I don't want to give instructions, everything in the form of programs. So I want to give some kind of a user interaction where I can automatically uh, customize it, etc. So that is the place, some of the GUI based dialogue builder. And then uh, that will directly move to the voice or a chart interface. So this is a, a typical infrastructure when it comes to the cognitive chart board. So again, so there are some chart boards are there without NLP engine, without machine learning service, like for example, some of the things which I will show that, and uh, some of the things which you have partial information, but uh, 
minimum things is the interacting with the data, the API, and the second one is the bot platform. So you either you can create your own or you can create uh, you know existing uh, platforms like IBM Watson, right? So this is a typical uh, chartboard architecture at an enterprise level. Okay. Uh, if you think little more AI perspective, the the engine perspective. So this is a typical architecture if you look at. So in an engine perspective, there are three, four things which you need to really understand. One is the database, and one is the uh, the document uh, training. I mean, where it is getting trained, and uh, you can see that that some of the services, uh, especially the AI engine care air area. So there uh, you can see that some of the web application based and etc. And uh, there is a uh, there is a two things. One you are talking about a you know one is a platform which is a service uh, uh, extensions, and uh, there is a cloud-based applications. Both the things which comes under in the top, the cloud-based hosting environment like AWS or uh, Blue Max, etc. And uh, some of the extensions which you can see that knowledge extensions like a cognitive analytics or a Maybe you can think about natural language processing. There are many areas which you can see that comes under knowledge base. So, <coughs> of course, this is a little uh, uh, difficult to read, but at least you know this is the AI level which we'll talk about. Okay. So till now we discussed about the architecture, right? Any questions from now till now? So, <laughs> okay. so I was uh, cut down some of the technology aspect. Uh, you know, this is the bigger diagram. This diagram only just I picked up a partial information there. I kept it, like a zooming in, right? So that you know what I was referring is the, the this part. I was a little bit zooming in there. You know, here just you know an uh, example. I mentioned that IoT engine, but it's not necessary. It depends on what is your application accordingly. The the technologies can change. But I was I was referring that it's a, a typical uh, architecture how it looks like. Right, but it's not necessary that this is the only architecture. But this is a typical architecture. Simple example I was uh, referring here. Uh, this is the, a simple application. So I was talking about there are three things which you really require to create. So one is, as I said, that the understanding part. So whatever the inputs you are giving in the form of intents. So you need to create an intent file. Okay. The intent means either in the form of FAQs or in the form of anything. That is the first thing. The second thing is the extraction of knowledge from that. That is that is the place I was referring that. The entities comes into the picture. Then the action, it can be depending on other application or it can be part of this. But if you think about assuming that you are working on a uh, an application related to a help desk, so it's mostly uh, frequently asked questions or some information about a specific uh, password change or etc. These are the typical tasks which we do that. So anyway, I'm going to demo it. You know, uh, uh, these uh, you know, I will show the code also. I will also show the demo and I will also show that. How it works, what are the changes which we can improve it, etc. I will show that. But yes, in terms of the uh, a typical, uh, whenever we are referring to the any kind of a chartboard, what are the key things which we should keep it in mind? This is what it looks like. One is you need to create a three things. One is you should have some kind of a platform, or you can create from the scratch. And the second thing is which you want to use it as a FAQ based or a transaction based or AI based. That is the second decision you need to take, and the third one is how you are storing the data in the form of, uh, you know, the storing the data in the database or in the form of file you are giving it. 
and the fourth thing is how you want to interact is it a voice or a you know chat so that is the place i'm going to demo it uh, there is a hr bot which i created you know a simple bot uh, for a demoing purpose i created without with ai i mean without deep learning and with deep learning or maybe with ai without ai i created i will show that the code and the how what are the things i kept it in mind and that will help you to understand a little more detail okay so yeah any other questions okay cool so now uh, as i mentioned that this is the main topic for uh, to understand how ai and deep learning revolutioning the chatbot this is the place first of all we need to little bit understand what is ai what is the role of ai so right for example if you think about ai perspective <coughs> i'm skipping couple of things which is uh, uh okay so let's go back a little bit there is a one slide i supposed to have one second so this is a little difficult to read for you guys but at least let me read it so there are few examples i was referring that the artificial intelligence so few things like uh, you know one thing is the nlp nlg etc the applications the other one is the deep learning algorithms the other one is uh, if you look at the applications perspective there are few things like you know uh, uh, the robotics or uh, the ai ai perspective and uh, there is a few things like speech recognition system so if you don't have that one and uh, your 50% of the chatbot evolution you know evol uh, you know if you look at the the overall development the 50% is contribution from because of which you are able to recognize what the voice is coming from right the, that is something which i was talking about but anyway so this slide little difficult for you to read but at least you know if you think about the a perspective there is a lot of terminology a lot of technology which we talk about but yes so let me understand quickly how many people are aware of the ai and uh, uh, the machine learning and deep learning algorithms how do you want me to take a quick walk you through quick recap okay okay so if you think about ai so the ai is uh, a set of algorithms which can attempt to computer to perform intelligent actions or intelligent you know decision right so indirectly what we are trying to say is we are trying to mimic the the human action right or a human intelligence that that's what you are saying about so when we are doing this one the it's a basically you can see that the ai describes a collection of a technologies together enables to machines to sense the sense the sensing is extremely important to know and act and learn from their own as well as from the others or other with a minimal human intervention right that is the uh, one important aspect and uh, this is the place if you look at uh, there are uh, there are so many applications if you think about these are all applications is not possible to do with one technology or what with one information so if for example if you think about uh, these are all things are if you look at as a individual silos but when it comes to the ai we are integrating all of these technologies like for example i was i was talking about internet of things or simulation and analytics or sensors image processing speech processing machine translation you know social media analysis data ingestion virtual agents these are if you think about these are all are each one is a, a big topic and with separate technology but if you think about a, a, a chatbot or a, maybe a virtual agent do you think is it successful without having a ai or without having a technology without having some information so that's what i was referring here ai is moving away from a monolithic approach there is nothing but it's a single approach we are taking a collective approach and to answer this question right so that is the biggest uh, advantage uh, which is taking place and of course when you talk about 
AI perspective, what are the key dimensions which you really require to look at? Few things like one is the classifier. What do you mean classifier? You know, classifying the data or a classifying a certain e, you know event, right? So a natural language interfaces. This is extremely important. This is a big thing which is talking about all the uh, recognition systems. And the other one is uh, chartboard, recommendation engine, image processing, machine learning, speech processing. These are all things are different, different dimensions of AI. Of course, I was showing that, right, one big brain and uh, it, you can see that small, small things. These are only we are talking about those, right. Of course, a little more deeper aspect. But if you think about uh, uh, AI, so under the A is a very big area, which is a combination of technology, combination of natural language processing, combination of, you know, uh, the algorithms. Right, so all of these things comes under AI. Now, one of the biggest area comes under AI is ML and deep learning. Right, so when I was talking about ML and deep learning, so you can see that the chart itself is uh, very intuitive. You can see that the AI is very big picture, and there is a big overlap between AI and data analytics. Right, so if you look at this, AI is, as I said, that sense, learn, reason, act, and ad adapt. So these are all actions which you are taking place with the help of technology or with the help of uh, different combination of these things. But if you think about data, data analytics, what is the role of data analytics? What is the role of data analytics? So finding insights, finding patterns, finding, you know, uh, understanding what is the data is saying. So that's the reason you can see that there's a big overlap. And you can see uh, another biggest thing is the perceptual understanding. This is uh, another biggest area in the... AI perspective, the perceptual understanding is extremely important. That's what I was talking about, you know, detect a pattern in the what you are saying. For example, if you look at this one, the audio or a visual data, detect the pattern. If something is extremely important. This is the place, the image processing, video processing, audio processing, all of these applications come into the picture. And under that, you can see that the machine learning is another biggest area, which is a combination of data analytics as well as it's a combination of perceptual understanding. This is the biggest area which contribute to both the areas. Under the machine learning, you can see that the deep learning is a, a subset of a machine learning algorithm. Here you can see that the algorithms inspired by a neural network, the artificial neural network, right? So that is something which is a special uh, sub area of machine learning algorithm which comes under the deep learning. Even in the deep learning also, broadly, there are two types of deep learning algorithms we see. One is a convolutional neural network. The other one is a recurrent neural network, which is called a CNN, one is a RNN, right? So I will discuss about a little more deep uh, about these things. There are a couple of more algorithms which is comes under advanced. One is a DBM, deep uh, Boltzmann machine and uh, a neural network, or RBM, that's a recurrent Boltzmann machine, RNN, recurrent neural network. There are uh, multiple algorithms which comes under that, but broadly you can classify into two buckets. One is the CNN, which is a convolutional neural network. One is RNN, which is a recurrent neural network. Okay, so of course, if you think about uh, machine learning, there are broadly three type of uh, algorithms we see. One is a supervised learning, and one is unsupervised learning, and one is uh, a reinforcement learning. When it comes to the supervised learning, it is like you already have some object defined. You already have the data. It's a predefined data with some answers, some label. Okay, for example, a, a simple example is sentiment analysis. What do you mean sentiment analysis? Yeah, so you already have historical data of a different reviews or a different uh, chart, whether it's talking about a positive or negative. So from the existing data, you already have a label for each a chart, is it a positive or a negative or something? And based on that, you are train the algorithm and identify the patterns, identify the relationship, and you will come up with an algorithm. That is what we call as a supervised learning. And if you talk about unsupervised, where you don't have any kind of labels, right? Where you don't have any target, right? So that's the place you will try to understand the relationships. You will try to understand the, the relationships. Uh, and the, some patterns within the data. So this is the place some of the algorithms like a, a clustering or a, you know perceptual mappings and there are few algorithms which are related to that. That is the place comes under unsupervised learning. 
the reinforcement learning is something uh, an example of robotics. If you think about robotics or maybe self-driven car, these are all things comes under a reinforcement learning. What do you mean reinforcement learning? The reinforcement learning is something, you know, based on the action. Suppose if you take an action, how it is helping you? How it is helping you means? So it's like more recurrent, uh, recursive approach. That means like, for example, uh, you are driving a car. There is a two routes are there. You know, one route is left and one is right. And if I take a right, I'm reaching my destination by um, in 30 minutes. If I take a left, I'm reaching my destination in 20 minutes. So how will you assess that? How will you estimate that? So that is the place, you know, you will not know in advance, right? You are doing some kind of experiment. Okay, first you are doing the you know, right side, and uh, in the next time, whenever you are going, you are taking the left side, and you are estimating that. A simple example. Uh, similarly, a kind of a gaming. Gaming. So gaming, for example, a chess. A chess is happening, how it happens, a computer will play something, how it play, what it will do. So it will understand, the, okay, suppose if I take a next move, how it, what is the consequences of that? And based on the consequences, and it will take the move, whichever a best possible move at that point of time. So this is something which you will get to understand from the reinforcement learning. The, you are reinforcing what you learned, right? So like the robotics and all of these things comes under uh, the, especially the gaming and robotics, all these things comes under reinforcement learning perspective. But yes, you know, in our uh, data science perspective, most common algorithms are supervised and unsupervised, but the reinforcement is very, very low. But especially, you know, the technology is evolving a lot, especially the IoT devices is comes into the picture, the self-driven cars or a gaming or a gamification, and all of these things are uh, big applications of reinforcement learning. And of course, few examples I was referring here, what is a supervised, unsupervised, what are the different techniques. In the supervised also we have uh, two broad classifications, one is regression, one is a classification, and uh, unsupervised there is a clustering. And I also mentioned few algorithms over here, so in case if someone want to look at a later point of time, this will, uh, this will give you a quick snapshot of what is the algorithms mean. And uh, I already discussed uh, a deep learning is one of the biggest area when it comes to the, in the recent trends. What is the deep learning? As I said that, it's a subset of a machine learning algorithm where we are trying to use a concept of neural network, which is, a, a, it's a, we are trying to mimic your human brain. So uh, a very interesting uh, uh, slide which I want to show that, uh, This is something interesting. So what is this interesting thing is, for example, if you think about uh, human brain, what is the human brain's functionality? So, you know, if you look at the human brain, there are broadly two sections you have it. One is a big brain, one is a small brain, we call it as. So if you think about this all colored thing, you can say it's a big brain, which is cerebrum. And uh, cerebellum uh, is a small brain, which is uh, uncovered, I mean, uh, this, this part. There is a, uh, we call it as a brain stem, which is uh, connecting to the, all the organs. When I say organs, means like whatever the, um, you know, po body parts, which is interacting with that, right? If you think about this one, so the brain stem connects to the organs, it, can, it will get the information uh, to the brain and you will process the information, etc. But even in the brain also, if you, if you look at the big brain, which is uh, a cerebrum, we have a four different components. One is a frontal lobe, and one is a peril, uh, parietal lobe, or a tem uh, temporal lobe, and ox. Now there are four parts you have it. Each part has a certain functionality. Each part has a certain functionality. And uh, basically, uh, we are trying to come up with an algorithm which will fit into the each type of functionality. Right, for example, as I said that the deep learning is something which you are trying to mimic the human brain, right? So when I'm trying to mimic the human brain, what are the things which I really need to keep in mind? So first of all, how brain is functioning, right? That's what we need to understand. So that's the reason if you look at the ANN, of course, ANN is a very bigger term, but just for a understanding perspective, uh, the, you know, ANN comes with a certain weights. So the weights is something, you know, okay, you are taking certain 
information from different different argons and based on that you are taking the decision that weights are a long term weights okay for example you already have some kind of a perception about a particular person okay he is a very bad guy so that is the kind of a perception you have it so you are giving some kind of a weightage to that particular person and when he is doing some action that action might be good but because of you already have some kind of a perception in your mind you always think as a negative right because that weight is influencing you know this one so that is the place so this an and if you think about uh, whether a particular person is doing a correct action or wrong action first of all you will keep in the past perception in the form of weight right so that's what i was talking about it's a long term memory it's a long term memory kind of a thing it comes to the the ann of course that is the role of a temporal lobe uh, lobe it takes care okay and uh, some kind of other thing like uh, front you know uh, the this one the occipital lobe the it's like uh, it's a, like a computer vision what do you mean computer vision analyze images analyze audio analyze video this is a kind of a computer vision application but yes if you think about image image what it will do you know it has a small small particle i mean small small sub portion and you are convoluting that at a some level some aggregation you are doing so suppose if you look at um, pixel what do you mean pixels here pixels mean a small component of image a image a small part of image and a small small pixels you are aggregating at some level we are calling as a uh, some you know some some kind of a name that is what we are calling as a, you are aggregating at some level to read that one so this is what exactly we are calling as a convolution convolution means something you are aggregating at a different layer right so that is a cnn this is this is one of the biggest applications which is somewhat similar the functionality which is taken care by uh, the the uh, what is that occipital occipital lobe or something i forgot the name exactly but yes that is what exactly and uh, the other one which is nothing but uh, uh, the front uh, frontal lobe it's basically uh, it's a the functionality of this one is like it's a short term memory short term memory means what you are doing you know one day before two day before based on that you want to take and the long term also you will take it based on both the things you will come up with the a perception about a particular person a particular action particular event particular something you will take an action with the help of short term as well as a long term so this is the place a short term will play a big role so you don't really convert con, you know take uh, input as a what happened a one year back now i want to take a input what you have done recently right how bad you are at one year back or how bad you are at a recently that is something which you want to take it when you take a decision about a particular person right so something which is you want to include the recent information some of the information you want to forget some of the information you want to take it and that is the role of the frontal lobe which is uh, taken care by you know uh, in the in the deep learning algorithm perspective the rnn will play the role of that one right so as i said that we are trying to come up with an algorithm which similar to what brain will function so as i said that you know the cnn ann rnn will play the role of these three things but there is a one big thing which is a little difficult to uh, you know understand the perception or context based some of the things which you really don't understand what internally is feeling so for example a particular person is there how he is internally feeling you will look at only his actions but you will not really understand his his brain right some of these things you cannot really understand right so that is some place which is uh, taken care by okay suppose if i am a user you know how a particular person think about me right so that is the intelligence which i if i have it i will try to act in a different manner right so that is the something which is really difficult to do that i think that is the place there is a, a lot of scope you know to improve i mean that is the place no algorithm at to come up with the solution i think this is the place there is a lot of research is happening in terms of deep learning does this make sense what is deep learning and how we are trying to mimic the brain with the form of uh, algorithms any questions okay if you come back to the algorithms perspective so i was referring that uh, okay i was referring that uh, there are two big areas one is the convolutional uh, neural net and one is uh, uh, recurrent neural net 
So, I was saying that the convolutional neural net is something roll up to higher levels of abstraction and features. So, as I said that like for example, if I process the image, as I said that the image is uh, you have a small part which is called as a pixel, right. You are aggregating that. For, so, you can see the right side example, the image you will have in the form of 1100 kind of a thing and the convoluted feature is nothing but you are aggregated that feature. So, that the it, it divided into four parts, I mean you can see that the there is a, a yellow color shade and that one you made as a four because what happened the first to four thing you are taking as you are aggregating at some level, right. So, that is what exactly uh, the convolutional neural net will do, it is a it will uh, create a layer which is an aggregated layer. And the recurrent neural nets is something which is uh, as I said that uh, iterate over sequential inputs. So, I mean to say that as I said that there are certain events you will take it event 1, event 2, event 3, event 4 etcetera and uh, that events basically uh, it in the form of series right. So, for example, uh, you know Chandra is from Bangalore and uh, where he is living suppose if that is something question is asked. So, where is currently living? So, if that question is there, if I ask that question, I you know okay, Chandra living is in Bangalore. So, that is the answer. So, how you are giving that answer based on your question, right? The question is where Chandra is living? Chandra is living in Bangalore. So, you are taking that what is your first letter, what is your second letter, what is your third letter, etc. There are some algorithms we have it, but this is the place there is a lot of uh, context you need to understand. First of all, Chandra and the location and where he is living, is he boy, you know is a boy or girl and if it is something you need to understand some of the context within the, uh, the sentence and based on that you need to come up with the, I mean that is what we call it is generating the sentence where you really require to answer the best possible thing, right. So, that is what exactly I was showing that, but here is the place there is a very one of the popularly known algorithm called LSTM, this is called long short, uh, long short term memory. So, which is very popular algorithm, I think uh, most of the uh, applications related to time based events. When I say time based events means like a speech or a text or audio etcetera. For example, you know if you think about audio, so uh, maybe you know a video. So, I want to video is nothing but what? It is a continuous frames right, it is a continuous images right. So, if I talk about image, I want to understand what that particular uh, you know image or a particular location, so, okay. I want to see that, uh, I want to posit something, I want to understand what that video is talking about, okay. I want to posit somewhere, I want to understand what is that video is talking about. How will you understand that one? You require to understand the context behind the last two, two scenes or a last one scene or something or last three scenes based on that only I can understand what is the context of that, right. So, that is what exactly I am talking about. When I talk about the time based means, you do not think about it is a time series analysis, it is a time based means a sequence, a sequential inputs, right. So, that is what it means. So, speech, text, audio in all the area you have a big uh, application, especially the algorithm called LSTM which is a one type of recurrent neural network the one version of recurrent neural networks. Again LSTM also have a wide varieties of uh, versions, I mean I will show you that couple of versions. One of the popularly known version is uh, GRU, uh, it is a gated recurrent neural network, okay. So, there are a couple of algorithms which is a little bit advanced, uh, probably I will not talk about that, but uh, one thing is uh, a deep belief network and uh, that is what DBN and uh, deep Boltzmann machine DBM. So, these are all are uh, a couple of algorithms here you will not talk about with the, with the individual variable, it is more talk about layers. So, this is a little bit understand difficult to understand at this point of time, but uh, at least uh, if you understand the CNN versus RNN that is the key thing which you need to understand especially uh, for a text mining or a NLP or an NLG perspective. The LSTM is very popularly known algorithm to use. <coughs> So, key applications I already mentioned that uh, if you think about like artificial neural network which is very widely used for uh, regression classification perspective and the convolutional neural network I was mentioning that especially the computer vision or a 
you know, this particular purpose. And the RNN, which is, I already mentioned that, used for time series based analysis or events. Uh, these are all comes under supervised learning. And unsupervised learning perspective, there are few things like uh, DBM and uh, self-organized maps, you know, especially the feature detection, uh, recommendation systems, and, uh, you know, auto-encoder. Again, it's a big, um, you know, application of uh, recommendation systems perspective. So these are all our things comes under unsupervised. So the unsupervised mostly here we talk about more on the feature generation or feature management or feature engineering perspective. But yes, a couple of applications like, you know, uh, recommendation systems, etc. we use it. So I already discussed about the human brain and the functionalities and how you can link your de uh, and deep learning algorithms with the uh, human brain functionalities. Clear? Okay, so I was, I think there are a couple of more examples. I think the same thing I discussed about that. If it is a structured data versus unstructured data. If you talk about a structured data, the ANN play a big role. If it is unstructured data, uh, especially the uh, role of D, you know, especially the algorithms like CNN and uh, RNN will come into the picture. So I was mentioning that image processing, audio processing, and uh, in, you know, <coughs> English translation, I mean the translation systems, and uh, all of these things comes under these things. Make sense? Okay, everyone clear with what is high level wow you about, what is uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning? Okay, so, <coughs> so when it comes to the applications, so, one of the key thing which we really need to understand is the recurrent neural networks, their applications, because this is one of the key thing which we need to understand is, here the applications are, uh, you can say broadly uh, four type of applications. It's like one to many applications. What do you mean that one to many? Okay, so if you look at the left side image, what is this image? The image is some kind of a, a dog is jumping into the somewhere, right? So this is the image you got it. And uh, what is the output I'm expecting? I'm expecting that a, I want to give a label to that. Okay, what that image is about, right? So when I given the image, what is the output I given that? Okay, a black and white dog jumps over the bar. That is the output I got it. How I got the output? Now this is not a you know you given right. This is the output which is generated by a machine by analyzing the image. So the your input is one image. Your output is a series of words. The series of words is each word is one type of output. In this case, you know one to many. The one to many is one image as input. The output is multiple words as a output. So that is what it means in this case. Again, now you need to understand here how the black and white came in the first, you know, you know, how you can pick up that it's a dog. These are all things that comes under the image processing. But what I'm trying to talk about is, you know, the concept one to many perspective. If you think about my input is one, my output is many. Okay. So now let's talk about a many to one. What do you mean many to one? So a simple example I was referring there is a sentiment analysis. Okay, sentiment analysis, what is the sentiment analysis? What are you doing? You are giving a, a series of words. I mean, you are giving a sentence where the sentence is a positive or a negative or a neutral. That is what we are trying to achieve, right? So in that case, what is your output? The output is one word, which is either positive or a negative or a neutral. But what is your input? A series of words you are giving. It's many values you are giving as to the algorithm. Clear? So that is the many to one. And uh, the many to many, many to many is something which is very common. Suppose if you look at the example of word translation. Okay, a sentence you given that, a sentence you given that, that sentence will be translated into another sentence. You know, for example, English to Chinese or Chinese to English or English to Germany, etc. So there you really require to understand. So English, the sentence will be one manner. But uh, in the same thing, if in the Hindi or Kannada or any other language, if you translate it, you will not get the same sequence of word, right? It's not like a word-to-word -word sequence. 
right? It's not like a word to word, um, you know, translation. What we are doing, your sentence translating means the words can modify it. The words can come, my second word can be a first word in my translation. That is possible, right? So that is what we are trying to understand here. The, again, RNN used for getting the context here. What is the next value of a, um, a particular word? Okay, if I got the first word is, okay, a particular word, and what is my next word should be, right? This is what I was referring that, uh, the sentence translation or translation engine. Like, for example, Google, you know, <coughs> of course, Google has their own sophisticated algorithm, but uh, the underlying theory is RNN, okay? And uh, again, the another biggest thing is which I already given the example of video analytics. So their video analytics is nothing but what again many to many. So what is a many to many? Okay, you are picking up. Uh, uh, you want to really understand the a particular uh, video what is talking about, right? Again, you will give in the form of sentence, in the form of voice or something. And what is your input? The input is series of frames. Or even in, the, in a given frame also, you can't really understand. You have to give a a series of, series of frames. So like this, you can see that there are plenty of applications you can see in the industry, especially with the help of recurrent neural networks, yeah? So here, what I mean is a record to record labeling. For example, record if I talk about uh, a simple example, I was referring that, okay, I have uh, a many to one, so sentiment analysis perspective. What I was talking about is a particular sentence, you know, I need to understand, is it a positive or negative or thing, right? So in this case, my algorithm can be anything. I mean, my algorithm is used a multiple, um, you know, uh, observations as an input, there's a multiple layers. That is what a different thing. But what I'm trying to hear is, what is my input for that particular thing? What is my output for that? So when we are talking about your understanding of application perspective or RNN perspective, yes, you know, a flower is, uh, uh, wh what is your question, the flower? Okay, so you are saying that you want to classify a particular flower in the, you know, a, a whatever flower it is. Is that what? Okay, composite input. You are giving a, a multiple information and you are classifying. So that is a simple classification problem because you are giving a different feature and that, that kind of situation you can directly use ANN itself. So the ANN, the reason is there you are trying to understand the, the feature, uh, ex, I mean, the, what is the feature is all about. But uh, what I was referring here, RNN perspective, you always talk about a, a context to understand to what is next action. So whenever I want to talk about a context, the context required the time based. Okay, what is happened just now? Okay, I, just that's what I was referring that uh, in the video based. Okay, if I pause something, I want to really understand what is that is talking about. Uh, two people, or two characters are there, what they're talking about each other. Will you able to understand? if you don't know the context, right? So that is the place the RNN comes into the picture. Yeah. The CNN is basically we are having a smaller, uh, you are bringing uh, some aggregation to something and you are using that as a feature, okay? The CNN is more like, I was referring that the image processing perspective, you have a fixed cell. You are, you are bringing a smaller, smaller thing. So for example, you want to identify the what digit it is. There, what we are trying to do, we are getting the image. That image is at a, at a very granular level. The granular level means the pixel. The pixel level, you are trying to understand. You are classifying, I mean, you are giving some kind of a numerical attribute to that, and you are aggregating that value. Right. That is the a difference between RNN and CNN. CNN is you are aggregating at a some layer and that will be used as an input, as a feature. But <coughs> 
exactly exactly i'm about to say that the first one the image perspective if you think about it the image analysis analysis the analyzing the image is something which is comes from the cnn and uh, the rnn which is exactly as he mentioned that the output you know for example you want to give the label to that what is that image is all about and that's the place how the sentence what is the next uh, uh, word should come after the black and white dog that is the rnn possibility so it's a combination of cnn rnn in this case right so is that make sense what is a deep learning and uh, how different applications of deep learning what happened very right, very calm okay cool so guys uh, uh, probably a little bit mathematics i'm not getting into that but uh, if 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 uh, mathematics perspective if you think about a, a simple example here i was uh, where is that example one second i think there is a one more slide is left out here okay for the time being i'm excluding that part because that require a lot of mathematical understanding but at this point of time if you think about there are two types of problems which you have with the um, you know with the concept of recurrent neural networks if you use as it is so as that is the one of the problem is uh, a vanishing gradient and uh, exploding gradient this is something which uh, uh, which is the problems which you have it to address this problems uh, we have uh, a concept called uh, long term short term memory network so which is a one special case of long term uh, sorry one special case of uh, you know recurrent neural network so uh, a simple example is something like this so okay so let me do one thing okay so <coughs> a simple application is something like this for example you got an email or i mean in this case what i was taking is a simple example called uh, sequence to sequence learning what do you mean that is for example it's a many to many output so many to many case means what um, you got an email and you want to respond to that email you you guys remember uh, whenever uh, you are using some kind of a, a messaging uh, in iphone or anything you're also getting recommendation right for example if you get an email a gmail for example and uh, based on that email it automatically give you the uh, automated uh, response i mean it will give you the three responses or four responses how it is giving that it is something like based on this understanding or based on this application so what is the sequence to sequence learning is is something you need to little bit understand it is, it has a two concept i mean two neural net two neural net means one neural net for understanding what is your input that is what the first neural net will do that is what we call as a encoding the other one is the encoding is nothing but the learning from the data and the decoding the decoding is nothing but you know answering your question so that is what exactly i was talking about the incoming mail are you free tomorrow so this is a uh, your question are you free tomorrow then what is your answer going to be yes i am free or no i am i am not so some of these things okay if i am saying as i am free so what is that means as and probably you give, should give a comma then space and i am free okay because why you use i because you use are you because you are referring to the particular person right so based on that basically what i am trying to say is uh, whatever the input and based on that you will try to encode it the learning and you will decode the answer this is the place your input will be a sequence the output also will be sequence so that's the reason we call it as a sequence to sequence learning and again the sequence to sequence learning uh, the very common application of uh, the lstm right so which which is something which i want to talk about okay so i, I will little more deep dive on this one with an application so that you will understand more but whatever we are trying to talk about all these are comes under deep neural network sorry uh, i mean whatever deep learning which we call it as but how to implement them what are the platforms are available so when you say the platforms one of the popularly known platform called uh, 
TensorFlow, but there are few more platforms are available like uh, Theano, Keras, Torch, Cafe, you know, these are all our different, different uh, common deep learning platforms are available to implement the deep learning process, right? So that is something, one of the popularly known thing which I was referring that, uh, which is a TensorFlow, which is developed by Google. And uh, this is, uh, you know, basically the TensorFlow is something, uh, it's like the inputs are uh, in the form of arrays, that's all. It's a, it's a, it's a multi-dimensional arrays. So here is the place you need to define some kind of a tensor, that's a kind of arrays, we call it as a tensor. The tensor is nothing but a multi-dimensional array used in the neural network as an operation. So how this data is flowing? So that is what, you know, in the form of graph which we can talk about, this is what we call it as a tensor flow. So the tensor flow is uh, a tool which can be used how the data is flowing from, you know, one neuron to another neuron, or maybe one tensor to other tensor. That is what we are talking about here. Again, uh, it has a, it, it is, it used for multiple purpose, but there are few things which I was mentioning here like uh, voice and sound recognition perspective or a text-based application perspective, or image recognition perspective, or a time series perspective, or a video detection perspective. There are multiple applications which we have uh, in, the, in, the, in the tensor flow. Of course, these are the top five, but there are plenty more. Okay, so I'm not getting into the discussion around the tensor flow perspective, but uh, at least I want to quickly talk about, uh, I think text mining is something which is a very big area, uh, but one thing I want to quickly talk about, this terminology. Uh, one is NLP. What is NLP? Uh, <laughs> actually not, but uh, I can share some of the uh, information maybe once you, uh, you know, whenever whoever is need, I can share it in person. But uh, this is not going to be available on the web or anywhere. Okay. But yes, a quick uh, terminology perspective, I want to quickly show that. One is NLP. What is NLP? Which is I was talking about natural language processing. In order to understand the, uh, na, you know, the, the human conversation. So first of all, I need to understand, I need to clean up the data. I need to process the data, which can be, machine can understand. So that is the place the NLP comes into the picture. Of course, the NLU, which is something like, which is a subset of NLP. Like for example, uh, NLU is an ambiguous nature of human language makes it difficult for a machine, uh, machine to always correctly interpret the user request. So this is the place you require to understand the context. So the context based understanding is something is really important. That is the place the NLU comes into the picture. The NLG, which is something as most of the times the output, how you want to, you know, give the output. That is the place NLG comes into natural language generation. So these are the key aspects when it comes to the any kind of a, a deep learning application, right? especially the text, voice, and audio, right? So these are the three big areas. So this is something which you need to understand. But one thing I want to quickly talk about is, I know about deep learning, I know about natural language processing, I know about you know, the technology, what it comes into the picture, and the architecture of the, this one. So one big area which is really, really revolutionizing the industry is the deep natural language processing, which is I call it as a DNLP, which is something I want to talk about here. Suppose if I take a one big area, one is a natural language processing, which is NLP, and the other one is deep learning, and the combination of these two things which I call it as a DNLP, deep natural language processing. And the deep natural language processing, there is a one more uh, section, which is a subsection we call it as a uh, DNLP, uh, which is, uh, of course, this area which comes into that. Uh, <coughs> so this area, which is a sequence to sequence model, all, all of these things which I was referring that, this comes into that area. So uh, examples, there are a couple of examples which I want to talk about. So if you think about examples perspective, if you think about a QA chart board, what is a QA chart board? The chart board, question and answer chart board. Basically, you have a repository of huge list of question and answer, and you will try to come up with the patterns, and that pattern is already existed in your machine. And whenever someone is asking question, it will look for the pattern, 
and based on the pattern you will answer the question. That is the Q and A thing. It is comes under mostly natural language models. The reason is to understand the pattern. Okay, here there is no context. Here you are not understanding. You know what is the intelligent manner you want to answer that one? I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about? I'm more talking about what is uh, you know the pattern. You know that in order to identify the pattern, I require to know NLP. This comes under the first section of that, which is a natural language processing model perspective. And there is another application which is audio frequency component analysis, which is comes under speech recognition. Okay, if someone is talking about something. I want to really understand what is that speech is all about, what he's talking about. So this is the place. What generally we do is again, he, this is also the. It's not 100% deep natural language processing. This is more like again uh, comes under the natural language processing models only, with a little bit, uh, you know, understanding of some mathematics. So here, what happened is, there is set of uh, patterns. In this case also, for example. Uh, audio, video, or uh, frequency. So based on the frequency, you have certain patterns. Okay. For example, there is a, a kind of a pattern is there. Is this pattern is matching with any of these existing pattern? So based on that, I will come up with the. Okay, this pattern is meant for this word. Or uh, this pattern is meant for this particular sentence. So based on the repository of patterns of the audio frequencies, and we will answer that question. Right. This is comes under audio frequency component analysis. There is a one more thing, bag of word models, which is a comes under classification, especially, and uh, this is uh, mostly comes under combination of natural language processing and uh, you know deep natural language processing. I mean, I mean it's, this is a partially comes under DNLP, but uh, <coughs> there is a one more thing, a text recognition. This is also another application, mostly used for image and video processing purpose, and uh, which is I was referring that, which is the last part, which is a sequence to sequence models. This is the place I was referring that encoder and decoder. Uh, which is a which comes under the uh, you know uh, kind of application like a chart boards, right? So these are the uh, DNLP applications like speech translation or a transcription and a neural uh, machine translation, a chart boards, Q and A, text summarization, image captioning, and uh, video captioning. These are all the examples of DNLP, which is I was referring that. Okay, there is a one uh, interesting thing which I want to talk about: a scenario. How uh, over the period of time, these uh, a D, I mean uh, AI and machine learning or a deep learning really helping to uh, change the industry. So I taken a some example over here. The example is a simple customer care center, and um, you know uh, some customer is trying to reach out to solve certain problem. Understand, I mean, solution for the problem. So that is what exactly I was referring the you know uh, scenario here. So the first scenario one, suppose if I don't have any automated machine, I don't have any kind of a thing which is out of your uh, natural language processing or a DNLP, etc. What is option you have it? You know, some customer agent will be there. That is a human brain, and the human brain will understand the problem and he will assess or identify what is. Is your problem, and you will answer that. So you got a solution. That is, which is not uh, anything related to your DNLP or NLP or uh, you know deep learning, right? But <coughs> if you come ac come across this one, what is this? It's like more IVR based. What is the IVR based? For example, if someone is calling, what is it will tell that? Okay, uh, press one for you know uh, problems related to this. Press two for problems related to this. So that is some kind of information you will get it, and based on that you will. Okay, if you want to know about how much bill, you know, press three. So what is that? It will. If you press three, it automatically information. So basically, what we are trying to do, this is again a kind of a question and answers based, and based on that you are getting the output. But that is something you are trying to do, which is a question and answer chart board, which I was referring that. Where what is required there? Do you need a DN, DNLP model there? It is just simple an algorithm which is based on the historical pattern. So this is the place the Q and A chart board comes into picture, but this is not more effective. It's not very effective, which is uh, you know it will not. It's a kind of a self-help kind of a thing which you can say that, but it's not acts like a human, right? So and the scenario three. Okay, so guys, you can see that 
these this particular thing which comes under NLP. Okay. And uh, scenario 3, which is a slightly a combination of NLP plus uh, maybe a little bit DNLP, uh, sorry, uh, deep learning algorithms you can use. So, for example, here what I am trying to do is, okay, I got the call and uh, here what I am taking is I am using some kind of a deep learning algorithm, right. The deep learning algorithm is what it is doing, it is recognizing what the human is saying. It is a kind of a a speech recognition system, right. So, this is the model which I am using which is related to NLU, NLU means natural language understanding, right. So, that is the speech recognition system and then once you understand that it will convert into the text and that text will be identified in the pattern and you will get the solution, right, which is a combination of a deep learning plus natural language processing. And if you think about the next scenario 4. What is the scenario for? You are answering the questions with the help of DL model for voice recognition and analyzing the question and answer with the help of another model. So, in this case what happened? A deep learning model used for what? Getting uh, understanding what human is saying. The next thing is what? Understanding, I mean once you get the data, once you translate the data into text, the text will go into the another model, that model will be built and it will give you the, I mean it will give you the some kind of a context based solution. So, here what we are trying to do, we are getting some kind of a context, but still there is a disconnect. What is the disconnect? The disconnect is because model 1 is not performing well, the model 2 will not come, because the reason is, you know that will be input for this. So, to understand the, the integration of these three things fails, then your solution will not be effective, right. So, this is a place the deep learning model uh, for an individual task may not be a, a right fit. So, that is the place which comes into the picture which is called <coughs> DNLP model. So, here what I am trying to do is I am getting the data, I am using that model for understanding what human is saying that is NLU part and I am also understanding uh, analyzing the data and I am giving the answer which is based on analyzing the context and that is the output I am going to give it. So, in this case one single model I am using for doing all the tasks. So, this is the place uh, the, the, the deep natural language process comes into the picture and this is the place the sequence to sequence models or a memory to memory models etcetera, we play a role. Is this clear? So, now you understand how you know progression happened. If you look at the progression, it started with identifying the patterns or first and then it is started with uh, understanding the hum, you know human uh, you know what the human is you know, saying that speech recognition system and then we are building a model for speech recognition separately and uh, analyzing separately. Now, we are doing a one single model which can help you to do everything, right. So, this is what we call it as an end to end DL model which comes under deep natural language processing application, <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> When I was referring that, uh, what are the uh, popularly known uh, model algorithm, right, when, when it talks about. So, one of the popularly known algorithm is bag of words, which is, uh, uh, which is suppose for example, I have certain data and I also have some kind of a answers like yes or no kind of a thing and I am giving a one more output, you need to say yes or no the back. So, it is it is like based on the understanding, this is more like a classification purpose, we use it a lot, especially the sentiment or maybe response like a yes or no kind of responses and that kind of situations the bag of word model comes into the picture. The bag of word is very simple guys, what it will do is, it will take a, a, a vector with a series of words and their frequency. For example, you have a uh, you know 10,000 uh, responses in the past and uh, you have a collection of words and how each word is you know repeating in different different uh, sentences. So, based on that frequency we are building a model. So, basically you are converting a text into a numerical values in the form of frequency, right. That is the place you know the frequency of. Uh, so, for example, I was mentioning that okay there is a one thing you have it and the uh, one big vector I have it and uh, what is the frequency of each word in that vector, right. So, this is what exactly you know and then that will goes into the 
algorithm and the algorithm will give you the final output. And uh, similarly, suppose in this case what the algorithm is something like this. So, for example, you got this one, there is an, uh, an algorithm called logistic regression or maybe a simple neural network, you know, for example. You can use any of them you to classify your data by using a training data, right. So, this is something we call it as a bag of four model which is again very popular in the industry. The other model which I was referring that you know a sequence to sequence model which is just now I discussed about and here is the place a one to one, many to one and a many to many you know there are different different application architectures we have it. In this case one interesting thing you need to understand is the bag of word model versus the you know the, the sequence to sequence model is. In the bag of word model what we do is we use a certain fixed number of words and what is the each word is frequency. That is what we are trying to do. But in this case what we are trying to do we are not going to use a frequency we are going to use position of the word in that sentence. Okay, a particular word what is the position in that particular sentence. So that is what exactly uh, you know this is the place starting of the sentence ending of the sentence in each sentence the word and the what is the position. For example, if you think about hello, hello is comes under fifth position or maybe third position. What is that position is all about? So, that is the position in terms of the words. So, that is what exactly we call it as, okay. So, this is something you know for example, the sequence to sequence models I was already mentioned that encoder is nothing but encoding the meaning, decoder is nothing but decoding the answer. So, this is what I was talking about. Uh, for example, uh, someone asked, okay, hello Chandra, uh, checking if you are back to Bangalore. So, but this, that, is, that is a question you asked. So, what I need to do? I need to first answer that yes or no, one of them, yes, I am in ba I am back or maybe yes or no, I am not. So, something like that I need to answer that. So, that is the place this encoding, decoding into the picture. Of course, little, little uh, I mean mathematical, uh, mathematics behind that and there is a one more uh, uh, methodology or one more uh, uh, algorithm which comes into the picture is uh, called greedy decoding and a beam uh, search decoding. What is the greedy decoding is something you know based on the context for example, my input I given uh, that is a letter I want to get the output. How can I get the output? This is the place I am here or maybe I am back or I am something. So, after I am what is the probability of that am can be fit into this and based on the context and after am what is the probability of the next best word which comes into the picture. So, that is what exactly we are calling as a greedy decoding. Greedy decoding is we are decoding in based on the best possible value. But the beam search coding is something what we are trying to do is after I give a input yes, what are the possible options we have it as yeah, thanks. So, these are the three possible you know options which you can get it and uh, each possible option also have a further values, okay. If yes is the my first letter, what is the probability of second letter will be? So, sure, I am etc. something like that. So, basically what I am trying to say is the greedy decoding versus beam search code decoding is a greedy decoding is very greedy which is what is the best possible value. And here we are giving a multiple options and we are getting the multiple patterns and which pattern is um, you know best possible option. So, for example, I was referring here you know when you get the mail uh, from a Gmail you are getting all possible options here, okay. I want to respond to that, right. How you are getting that recommendations? This is what exactly we call it based on the um, you know uh, beam search decoding which we are going to use. Okay, there is a uh, one more algorithm which comes under deep natural language processing which is attention mechanism. When I say attention mechanism which is basically uh, you have a context you know every letter what is my next for that I need to really understand the context for a lost three letters or lost three values or lost four values and I want to give some kind of a, a weightages each letter or each input. That is the place uh, the context vector we will create based on the weights and that will be input for a next uh, value which comes into that. So, this is what exactly we call it as attention mechanism. 
the fourth one is uh, of course this is the same thing i was referring that uh, attention mechanism again here you have a global attention mechanism local attention mechanism global means you will take the entire value you will pass the attention i mean uh, the context vector to the next input and the local means which is if you take a few words or a few values which is the closest to that okay so this is a quick overview about a deep natural language processing algorithm guys if you look at this one the foundations we have done three things one is what is deep learning what is natural language processing what is applications of deep natural language processing and we also understand what is the architectural you know uh, understanding so now what is the next important thing we need to understand is we need to understand the how to build a chartboard with the help of this one right so that is the place you need to understand few things we already discussed about uh, architectural view i mean and uh, this is the one important thing you should know if i want to build a, a chartboard so first thing is i want to understand what database you want to use it what apis you want to use it and uh, the bot application here is the place i was referring that what is a chartboard yeah the same thing only i am talking about there <laughs> yeah so here is the place there are three four things which you need to understand one is a web server one is a bot application one is a database one is apis one is a web hooks and uh, one is a messaging platform so these are the uh, five things related to technology you need to understand right so <coughs> if it comes to the uh, uh, chartboard there are a programming driven chartboards and non programming driven chartboards a non programming chartboards i given few examples here but which is more like a gui based but uh, here the problem is you don't have nlp inbuilt mechanism so this is a one of the limitation with the non programming based uh, chartboards more like database driven so but there is a one set of frameworks which are available under um, to develop a, a chartboard chartboard frameworks which is nothing but a predefined packages just like a package in python or r you have a, a modules which which used for a specific purpose in this case we have certain packages are available like uh, you know one of the package which is very popular is rasa nlu and there is another package called botkit so these are all our packages which is simplify the process i mean it's a predefined functionalities which is already have it and you will use that framework to build the chartboard right <coughs> so i mean i was referring to the couple of limitations etc and uh, there are couple of one thing which is ai services which is i was referring that ai platforms you know if you think about the ai platforms perspective there are few platforms are very popular one of them called uh, amazon lex and ibm watson and uh, the louis is uh, something which is uh, gen, you know built by uh, microsoft uh, and wit ai and vue api.ai these are all are a few platforms which you really don't uh, require to build from the scratch which you can take as a, a platform to start and you can start working on it right so ibm watson you know if i want to build a, a Uh, a particular chartboard for example if i take from the scratch it, it will take at least uh, 10 days or 15 days in ibm in half an hour you can do that because there are predefined functionalities which will be help you to come up with that quick i mean it also has a lot of algorithm driven and there is a lot of learning already there etc so that is what i mean of course and when i talk about ai services there are a lot of uh, services with their limitations etc um, of course a little difficult to um uh, understand at this point of time but one key thing whenever we are referring to the chartboard uh, ai platform this is one key thing you need to understand is one is the cost one is uh, uh, the scalability and uh, suppose if i want to choose a, a ibm watson as a platform so how will you do that so this is the place i was referring that there are few things a cost is something a number of end users a long ways is english or non english or uh, you know what are the you know knowledge management you know all of these things 
uh, will comes into the consideration when we decided the uh, you know a particular uh, platform is huge for your requirement. Okay, so when we talk about a chartboard, a simple four steps which you need to understand. One is what is your uh, business problem, what is your uh, corpus uh, creation, and uh, the build and deployment, and monitor and learning further. So these are the four key steps which you really require to keep it in mind. And uh, for that, uh, I will show you um, few example. I mean, few things. You know whether your solution is really good or not. So what are the key metrics which you really need to keep it in mind when you are evaluating a chartboard is good or not. So these are the key things. One is, of course, the task execution is one important thing, but the other things like what is the capability of NLP and NLG, which is brings you a lot of intelligence, and uh, image and uh, a speech recognition capability, and the learning based capability, and integration capabilities with the connectors and adopters, and sentiment analysis, which is you know a feedback capturing that is another aspect, and uh, extended UI. I mean, can we extend the user interface with a you know a different thing, and mobile adoption? Can we add it to the mobile? And multilingual, and uh, audi uh, you know auditable. Auditable means which you can audit the what is learning mechanism. So these are the few levers which we use it for understanding the whether your chartboard solution is really good or not. Right? Okay. So <coughs> so if you think about the how a chartboard evolved, I think this is already discussed. It started with the Q and F chartboard which is a specific to answer to answer and then we discussed about a scenario where you can use NLP and some extent understand what is your what instead of asking a question in a particular manner you can ask a different different manners it can understand the context it will analyze and it will give you the answer for that and the other one is uh, using a deep learning which is a uh, here you have a sequence to sequence models which I was referring that and the other one is attention models you remember attention models I was referring that how you can add the context to the next set of values right and the biggest one which is right now which is in the industry uh, it's not it implemented 100% but which is a lot of research is happening I think the next uh, set, set of chart boards will comes with the uh, memory to memory right so this is a quick understanding of how a chart board evolved over the time with the help of AI and deep uh, natural language processing, etc. Right. So what I want to do is I want to quickly show you uh, a one chart board. I mean I have multiple chart boards. Probably I will show depends on the time what is we have it. But uh, given I have a 10-15 minutes, so I want to quickly show you a, a particular chart board uh, which is used for HR perspective. So what is the role of uh, what is the different situations uh, chart board can be used in HR function? One is at the time of recruiting, uh, like a screening the uh, you know the people, and the second at, you know current situation is um, internal policies. I want to understand the internal policies. A third one is maybe leave. I mean I want to understand uh, how many leaves I have it. When I can I take the leaves or a leave management system, and like this there are multiple scenarios which you have it. So what I want to show is, I want to show you how you know a chart board created. You know, you remember we understand there are three, four things. One is intent, one is entities, one is context, right? So these are the three, four things which I was mentioning at the time of very beginning. How a chart board will understand, right? So let me quickly uh, show you uh, a chart board which is related to that. Okay, uh, this chart board I developed uh, using multiple platforms. Of course, one is uh, a simple FAQ perspective, and the other one is uh, using uh, Rasa NLU, which is only just NLP based, and the other one is which is a TensorFlow platform uh, using that is the place the deep learning algorithm which we used it. So of course, you know I want to show all of them, but you know given the time, I will directly show you the you know uh, with the help of uh, the TF I mean TensorFlow thing which can give you a quick understanding about that. Mm. 
No, uh, the platforms have, uh, I mean, local database systems also you have it, as well as the APIs to the, uh, I mean, REST APIs with the uh, cloud-based thing. Yes. 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 So otherwise, the solution won't work, right? So it it is, um, it's already there. Yeah. Okay. So let me show you the HR chart board. Okay, so in this case, uh, there are two things which which is uh, uh, you need to understand. One is the model. Uh, whenever we are building a model, there are two aspects. First of all, based on your historical data or based on your historical patterns, you want to build the model, and uh, using that model, you want to answer the questions. That is the uh, current thing which I was referring that. First, building a model, uh, of course, if you think about in this case, I used a three, I mean, I'm, I developed this one using a Python. Of course, the TensorFlow can work in, in other you know, platforms also, but I'm using a Python for this. And in this case, if you think about, there are a simple uh, three uh, packages I used. One is a TensorFlow, and one is NLTK, one is, uh, you know, uh, some kind of randomization perspective or uh, some mathematical calculation perspective, etc. There is one more uh, thing is regular expression. So the regular expressions and NLTK used for natural language processing, I mean process your data. And uh, TensorFlow is nothing but, uh, you know, running the algorithm or a model, right? These are the two aspects. So in this case, if you think about, first thing is I want to understand the intent. So for example, I was, uh, Let me show you that. Okay. So, for example, in this case, uh, the intent is something which uh, which we want to understand. Okay. So, the intent which I given in the form of uh, JSON data. Okay. Let me show you. Okay. So this is uh, an input is taken by model. Uh, of course, the intents is some of the things which you need to supply in the form of data. So intents is here you have you have to give a key value pair kind of a thing. So what is the key and what is the value? Okay. For example, some of the things I want to really understand. A particular person is talking about uh, whether he is greeting me or not. So I want to understand greetings. Greetings means wh what are the different situations you call it as a greeting like a hi, hello, you know, a greeting, good morning, good afternoon, etc. You know, all the things which I was defined there. So, for example, uh, the first thing as I was referring that it's a greeting. These are all are uh, different things which comes under greeting perspective. I call it as a, a tagged as a greeting. And then, you know, like by, you know, suppose someone is saying bye. So, how will you doing that by, you know, etc. So, basically what I was referring is these are all things comes under a goodbye kind of a thing, like a thanks kind of a thing, or a recruitment kind of a thing. And again, these are all are, I'm giving the pattern. I'm not saying that this is the only thing. I'm, I'm saying that it's a pattern. Okay, this is, if I mention the pattern, of course, I'm supplying this input in this manner, but the, the, the input can be given in the form of data frames also. I mean, just like a, a tabular form also. But here, I given the data, because even the tabular form of data also you will convert into in this form in the later point of time. That is some under data processing. But right now I excluded the data processing part, but just I'm explaining that how the data will be input for your model. Okay. So I'm saying that if yes. So this is something if you are using from the scratch, you need to build it. But yes, if you are using a AI services like uh, IBM Watson or any other thing, you don't need to build from the scratch. So you need to just supply what are the things comes under greeting. I mean, just give the intent and class and the values. Automatically, it will create a JSON file for you. Right. So that's what I'm saying that. That's simplifying your life. 
uh, without writing a too much program for that. So here what we are trying to do is we are trying to give a pattern because the algorithm need to understand that, right? So what is the understanding? If I give this is the pattern, okay, this pattern it will be related to greeting. This pattern is related to introduction. This pattern is related to something. So that is what I was tagging it. So this will be my input data. And uh, one more thing is, if someone is talking about a policy, someone is talking about leave, someone is talking about helpline, someone is talking about something, how it can understand what are the key set of keywords which can comes under policy? What are the set of patterns which comes under leave? So here I define uh, all those things are a tag, but as I said that, these are all things you can give input as input in the form of tables or in the form of anything, right? So that is what I was referring here. This is one input data set. The one of the input data is my HR database. What is HR database? Typically employees information you have it, right? So that employees information, uh, probably you can see that all these details which I have it, which I created uh, this uh, data set um, and I created a, a SQL server, not SQL server, it's my SQL server, I kept it. Okay, these are all are the employee information. So like employee details. This is your traditional database, anyway you will have it in the organization. What I want is, suppose if someone is asking for a leave, if someone is asking for a leave, first of all I need to check how many leaves you have it. Okay, if you have a leave, then you can get the leaves corresponding information, okay, you have how many leaves and you can take or not. Maybe some situations what happened is, you the you given a wrong information your employee ID is not correct. So I need to go back and look up the value whether it's available or not. So I need to pass the information. So these are the couple of things uh, which also taken care by the algorithm. So in this case what I given is two inputs. One input is intents, one input is the database which is related to employee information. By using this I will get the a cup, you know, final output with the help of an algorithm. So in this case, the algorithm, what I used is, uh, you know, deep learning algorithm. Of course, in this case, the data size is very small, etc. So it is not super effective, but at least to, uh, to understand the algorithm, let me show you what it means. First, what I have done is I connected to the database uh, with the help of, uh, you know, a package called MySQL. And uh, there is a, in Python, there are a couple of uh, packages we have it, like Pickle. Pickle will help you to save the model. Suppose you build a model. I don't want to build a model every day, right? So I want to save that model. Whenever I'm running, uh, a chartboard is running, the model will be you know, loaded and using that model you are predicting it or you are going to give the answer. So that is the place the Pickle uh, will be very helpful uh, to get that. And uh, of course we should have um, uh, the, you know, the neural network, build a neural network for that I'm going to use a, a TensorFlow uh, learning and in that you have a different different connections which you need to supply. In this case, of course, I did not use uh, LSTM, but because the LSTM is uh, required a good amount of processing, uh, etc. Uh, in this case, to show you, to de you know, demonstrate, I used a deep neural network which is comes under you know, TensorFlow itself. And uh, of course, I using that, then when I have the data, first of all, when I give them some data, it, it required to understand. So that's the place the natural language process comes into the picture. This is the place the analytic functionalities are used, like clean up the sentences, you know, suppose some of the sentences, I want to remove some pause, you know, uh, some summing and processing the data, etc. all of these things will be taken place. And finally, you will build the model. And uh, after that, what I'm going to do is, I'm also giving some kind of error threshold. What is error threshold is? Okay, you got answer, what is the corresponding error to it? So that which one you want to give as an answer, right? So that is also I given that. Then I created a, a separate, separate module for each individual line of uh, survey. So like for example, leave and um, policy, recruitment and response. There are different, different uh, modules I created, which is a simple user defined functions based on the model which we get it, okay? So let me show you this. Uh, and, and uh, how it will work. For example, in this case, first of all, you need to build the model. Uh, model building is just, it's very simple and uh, you can run it from anywhere. 
but I am just using that uh, Python uh, shell, uh, Python in this case model dot py. So once I get it, the model is done, the model will get saved based on my input data and based on my intents. And uh, Uh, this is uh, not there, but uh, I think this is not there in the uh, GitHub, but I can ex you know, export it. I'll probably you can pick up that. This is I used my simple data at my office basically. Uh, the chart board's accuracy is, uh, you know, I worked for one of the online travel company, so there we are trying to build a chart board for, the, uh, for them. And we got around 90% uh, accuracy with a uh, front, front, um, what is it, front end uh, application. So front end application means uh, basically if someone is directly calling for a specific information, et cetera, that one we got very good accuracy. But yes, some of the accuracy, some of the line of businesses we are not getting that much accuracy. So there still we are you know, improving it. There we got around 65% accuracy we got it. We are still in the process of improving that. Even uh, uh, even we we come from analytics labs. There also we are trying to implement uh, the chart board, which I am currently working on it. So there, uh, you know, different people will call for us, or different different information, different services, or etc. So based on that information, they will ask us, okay, can you send me this information through mail? Or can you provide me a, a kind of a brochure? Can you provide me your credentials? So some of this information which we automated with the help of Chartboard. In case if Chartboard is not able to answer and uh, either we will give them a information that, okay, uh, you can reach out to the person A, B, C with this number. So that way, basically what happened is our office hours is between uh, 9 to 6 and if anyone is coming before uh, 9 or uh, after 6, at least instead of uh, not reaching out to them, not reaching us, we are automated that part. At least the accuracy is not 100%, but at least 80% or 70% accuracy also it suffice. Right. So that, that is something which we are implementing it. So, so in this case, the accuracy is referring to that how you are understanding your question in that case, the context. So for example, you understand, suppose you ask some information, but you are given as a information as a leave information. For example, you did not ask leave, but you know, the system gave information related to leave. That is a accurate, mis you know, that's not correct. Misclassification or mis, uh, mis uh, that's called error. Yes, that is what it means, correct, exactly. The accuracy is nothing but in this case, how many questions correctly understood and correctly answered? <coughs> no, it is it depends on uh, what type of uh, service you are looking at. That's what I was mentioning that uh, front end uh, desk, front desk, if you have it. Correct, correct. That's what I was referring that, again, it uh, depends on the uh, level of data what they're using it, but uh, yes, the front desk is mostly the accurate, it's uh, 80 to 90 percent accuracy you can expect. <laughs> that's true, that's the reason I'm saying that. They, instead of, if something is, the, you know, the, the, I given the threshold, right, if the threshold is the probability of the answer is 90 percent correct, or 80 percent correct. So based on the threshold only, I will, I'm giving the answer. If I if I'm not able to achieve the threshold, what I'm trying to do, I will ask them to give the information to the uh, people, right? So that that's what I was referring. That okay, guys. In this case, uh, let me quickly show you what is the uh, output looks like. Okay, there are two chart boards. I have it. One is with uh, a nice user interface, and one is with uh, uh, without user interface. But it doesn't matter what interface it is.
Okay, so uh, in this case, it, the user in, it, it is not uh, not having any user interface, but it is just uh, it's asking the user and bot response. The user is, for example, hi. Then uh, it is immediately responded to that. Okay, hi, uh, how can I help you, etc. And uh, suppose uh, I want to know about. <coughs> So I want to know about leave. Then what it does, it asks that can you let me know your user ID, right? So this is the context. So in this case, for example, uh, I'm using the data, uh, something like, for example, I'm using a, a particular uh, employee information. Okay, I'm giving this uh, data as an input. And it will tell me that uh, you know you have only four leaves, and uh, you can talk to HR. So basically, we connected to the interface, and that's how we got it, right? So of course, you know I will also show you another application which is uh, I created for a conversational UI. One second, uh, just I need to take only one more minute. <coughs> this is open-ended. Uh, the other one is a closed-ended. Closed-ended means specific to HR and policies, etc. Here, this is open-ended. You can ask any questions and uh, it will answer that questions to that. So it's open-ended, it's a generalized uh, conversation. So this is a, a kind of a, a application which I created a flask, uh, which is a just interface. So suppose, uh, you know, you can ask any questions just like, how can I call you? Okay, call me Chandra. And uh, hello Chandra, are you man or woman? <laughs> Something like that, just a general conversation it asks you. So basically what I'm saying is, of course, this is an application which you can integrate with a, a front-end, uh, you know, any uh, web-based platform or anything, right? See, guys, the idea is here you will not be an expert in this one session or something, at least to, un to make you understand few things like what is chartboard, how it is, over the time it's evolved, what are the key things you should keep it in mind, you know, how you can... Uh, you know, create a chartboard, what are the basic architecture, and what are the platforms are available, what are the key algorithms which you should know. This is the objective of the session. Make sense? Any questions? So there it's a simple deep uh, neural network which is, uh, you know, uh, simple ANN only with a multi-layer neural network. I mean, uh, instead of one single layer, you are using a multi-layer. <coughs> but yes, I said that LSTM, which require a lot of parameters I need to pass, <laughs> it will be more processing time. So to demo it, I did not show that. But yes, I have another um, chartboard with the LSTM mechanism also. Okay, good guys, thank you so much. Um, you know, thanks for the uh, patience. <laughs> it's a long session for three hours, it's not easy to digest. Thank you. Thank you. My mail ID is chandra at the rate analyticslabs.co.in. <coughs> I will share, uh, you know, I will, you know, make it as a couple of things, uh, you know, some of the information I picked up from different, different sources, you know. <coughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Chandra for you, everybody. Give me a big round of applause for this beautiful session that we all had. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, if anybody having any question, last two minutes you will be having with us in this session. Anybody having any question, I'll come to you. Any question which is coming in your mind? C H A N D R A Chandra at the rate uh, GitHub. No. Analytics Labs. A N A L Y T I X. It's so it's in your uh, tag. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure, sure. sure.
see that is the case you know we also look at uh, the pattern right because it's a not this one it's a context based so all the accuracies is always look at a uh, based on the uh, historical learning data you have a learning data and using the learning data you will also understand which one is uh, you know uh, which what is the accuracy of existing learning uh, data and then you can also first of course this everything will pass through training and testing mechanisms right but yes the you are talking about okay what is the context related to that how it you can take a threshold that's what your question right the threshold is will be defined based on the you know you remember i was showing there is a uh, greedy um, there are two types of things which i was talking about one is a greedy one is a bean search so that's the place there is a based on the con, you know conditional probability uh, based on the conditional probability we'll get the information Yes, there are for everything for every model you are building. There is accuracy if it is a supervised. If it is unsupervised, uh, there is no uh, a measure which we can measure it. But if it is a supervised, yes, there is a, a way to measure it. In some of the things, it's not possible, you know. You know, but some of these cases which you can use it. I mean, in that case, you are talking about text summarization. There is no fixed rule, right? So. probably you can if you have a possible option then it will look at that for example the same answer which converts to the a particular value what is the probability right that is the probability estimation you are talking about so based on the probability only we are referring that accuracy in this it's very subjective it depends that's the reason i said some of the cases it's a, it's highly difficult to measure it's a very subjective Okay. Any any last question that I'm going to take for sir on behalf of him? Any last question? If you have any. Yes, I am currently uh, working on a, a price engine. There we are using some of the deep learning, and uh, I I'm also working on a, a project which is uh, I told you right. There is a one project which I am working for. Uh, one of the online uh, cab aggregator just like uber and wala in india i am working for that there also we are using some kind of deep learning algorithms to understand the intent of customer uh, review uh, good thank you so much all right thank you very much sir for your wonderful session and ladies and gentlemen it's time to tell you our sponsors list learning partners jiksha academy university of chicago we have gold sponsors who are analytics labs ibm and zs bridge i2 i great learning iidt insf sof manipal pro learn sap the weather company times professional learning and unlimit a reliance group of company which is they are the silver sponsors our exhibit sponsors are 3 loq analytica bd bizwiz advancer indium we have intelligent enterprise.ai prexis business school river university sarcom and willy panel sponsor panel sponsors are actify data labs and our dinner sponsor is emerticus learning everybody this is cipher day 1 and this is our session 1 with mr chandra we'll see you post lunch break thank you